All right, here we go. TK Kirkland, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. S seven years strong now, I think. Seven, seven or eight. Seven or eight. Yep. Oh, yeah. Vlad man. TV. Vlad, the architect mm. of this business. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that. I'm the YouTube OG. Exactly. Absolutely. You, know, you may love it, hate it, whatever, but, but you know, we started in 2008. Back when, you know, no one really took the stuff seriously. Absolutely. 15 years later, we're still doing look it. Look at it. Look at it. And I'm think I, I, no matter what podcast I'm on, it could be in London, it could be in Australia, it could be Miami. I always show Vlad, the guy who truly took me to a whole nother level in this podcast game. Because people will always say in my comments, yo, I like that you're doing other things, but I will always remember you for Vlad TV. Mm. Shout out to Vlad. Love it. Well, and you were also a big part of our success as well. Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. You know, all your millions of fans over the years yes. have all come to our platform mm -hmm. to watch you and everyone else. That we right. Have. Yeah, it's a blessing. All right, so let's get going. Yes. Well, I think the biggest thing in the comedy world since our last interview was the Chris Rock special. Absolutely. That was the biggest thing mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. comedy. Right. In stand -up. In comedy, right. So as everyone knows, Chris got slapped by Will Smith. Uh, at the Oscars, and he did mention a little something in his own comedy shows, but he finally let loose yes. on his Netflix special, mm -hmm. which I believe broke all types of records and everything yeah, else. Yeah, they like that. showed it in, at, at one time all around the world. It was yeah. it was the first time a comedy special had ever been shown live uh. at the same time around the world, which yep. was phenomenal. Yep. Very strong special. Yes. And at the end, he addressed the whole slapping incident. From your point of view, now... You know everyone involved. You know Chris. Absolutely, yeah. You know Will. Yes. You know Jada. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I see you do your homework. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> so when you saw the Chris special, what'd you think? It's like going to a therapist. Mm. You know, you have to have an outlet to vent, and he was able to vent on so many levels as a comedian. And believe it or not, that's what helps most comedians. If you go through pain, you have an outlet to talk. So he did what he felt was right for him, which I love. And there's no other way to put it. He did what was good for him. And he waited so long because I'd have sued. I like money. <laughs> you would have sued him. I'd have sued him. And you would have won. I would have won. Yes. Yeah. So for Will to, to, to sit back and take that, I, I slew him as well. He had to take it on the chin. You didn't see there was no backlash from it. Oh, I can't believe um, Chris Rock talked about me and my family. They, when you do something wrong, you have to take it on the chin and move like a man, and that's how he moves. So salute to um, Will Smith as well for taking it on the chin. But I would suit. You would have suit. <laughs> Absolutely. With Will Smith, you could have probably walked away with a good maybe $10 million. Easy. 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 If not suffering, public embarrassment. Because that's where yeah. I'm at with it. Like, I have children who I love and who they respect me so much. And if a man smacked me on the worldwide stage, like, well, to the me, biggest stage in the world that night. That night. That night. I, everyone, more people are watching the Oscars around the world than I think anything else. Yes. And that would have hurt. Yeah. Me, it would have been an ego thing. It would have hurt. So me, I was I was always taught if you want to hurt somebody, go for their pockets. Mm. Okay. And that's what I would have done. Well, the one thing that everyone sort of was like, ooh, about was when he called Jada a bitch. Yeah, I'm not a good. In this world that we live today, especially since 1988, the word bitch is just, it depends on how you use it, right? If I, I use it in my stand-up, and I use it to get my point across. For him to say bitch to her meant something because it was directly to her. Yeah. And um, she deserved it. Like, when I talked about Jada not too long ago, I forgot what show I was on. People were a little upset with me that I talked about Jada. But I'm the kind of man, like, how I, I, I protect you. I protect Will in my own way from a masculine street IQ. When I see a man being misled or hurt that he does nothing about it because of his reputation or 
He feels that this is supposed to be the right way. I'm the guy I can't I can't sit back and allow people who I love, people who I respect to be played a certain way. So I voice out, even though it may not be my part, but now I'm an influencer. People listen to me. And I want to say things just not for him, but for young men who might, oh, I want to stay in this relationship because I have this kid. I want to stay in this relationship because I don't want to lose her because I don't want her to get hair. And I want people to understand you have to choose what pain you want. Mm. And when you see Will Smith, when he was sitting there with Jada Pink on the Red Table Talk, and the pain when she had cheated on him, that look on his face, uh, what she was doing was one of the horrific pains that I've ever seen in my life for a man. Because I'm like, bitch, cut the motherfucking lights up. God damn it, cut the gun. <laughs> like, go to commercial. We've been going to war up right. in that motherfucker. But he's not that kind of guy. And that that hurts me as a as as an OG, how I, how I was raised and what I believe in. So um salute to Chris Rock for doing what he had to do. Well, yeah. Because I mean, he I took think... the easy route to me. He waited a year mm. to live with that pain. But got a big check for it. But got a big check for it. Got a big check. Yeah. He knew that if, because I remember when it first happened, you know, me and DL are friends. Yes. And, and he's friends with Chris Rock. So right. I'm like, yo, if Chris Rock wants to do an interview, like, I got I got a check for him. Right. It's not going to compete with a Netflix check, right. but it's, it's a check. Yes. It's a sizable yes. check. And he's like, nah, nah, he's cool for now. Right. And he's thinking, okay, I got a, a massive check on the way. If I do this, now I could sue and then still get the check, or I could just get this huge check. And at the end of the day- I did both. You would have done both. <laughs> right. But shit. but what's interesting, I remember me and DL were talking about this, and this is one of the things that Chris mentioned in stand-up. He said, look, most men, if not all men, have been cheated on yes. at some point. Absolutely. I know I know, I have, you probably have, right. I'm sure my cameraman right. has, et cetera, et cetera, right. right? But no one has to then go do an interview with a person that cheated on you. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> have that interview blasted all over the world. And that's, you understand what I'm yeah. saying? That like, right okay, there. Look, look, you cheated on me. Right. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm just going to go on with my life. Oh, I got to sit here and listen to you talk about your entanglement. Exactly. And the head, for them to have, the audacity to have a word for it. Entanglement. No disrespect. I'm I'm smart, but I'm you know I'm I'm smart, but I never heard entanglement before. <laughs> That's a new word. Yeah. So I was like, what the fuck does this bitch say? Like, what? <laughs> like what? Like oh man, that pissed me the fuck <laughs> off, man. From from a guy who is um not an expert on relationships, but I'm pretty good. That Vlad, I'm being honest, that hurt me. To the point you got to ignore it a little bit so it don't affect your life. Right. I like, yo, man, that's your own motherfucking <laughs> problem. But it did catch me a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, I mean, look, every marriage is different. And sometimes people have relationships outside the marriage. But they don't usually go on vacation with a guy <laughs> who's so true. wrestling with their significant other. Mm -hmm. Or girl, for right. that matter. Like usually kind of keep that separate. Absolutely. You keep that completely right. separate. You know, like you shouldn't, the person shouldn't even know who that person is. Totally agree. But y'all going on vacations together. Y'all frolicking. Like, and Some then, and then August Alcina kind of came out as gay. Right. Remember he had his little boyfriend with the makeup right, on? Right, right. Now, if I was real, I'd be getting tested because he could have been still gay fucking with Jada. You never know. You this never is what know. I'm saying. This is how you never know. your mind can start thinking. You know, because you really got motherfuckers out here dip toeing both ways. Yes. And I'm the kind of guy, listen, and to all you motherfuckers listen to me, if that's how you are, get, stay on that side of town. I'm not against you, but li for, for real motherfuckers who single, leave that shit to us. Let some real G's handle it. I'm not against you, but stop coming from town back and forth to town. Fuck that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Red Table Talk got canceled along with every other facebook show right i guess they're you know trying to shop it to other places it is very popular so i'm sure someone will Somebody probably pick it up i just hope they don't have willow on it <laughs> <laughs> and let me explain to you why it's not that i don't i dislike willow i'm old school i believe children should not be at the table with grown folks you don't have enough experience in life to give an opinion on certain topics. It's like we was growing up, kids stay in a child's place. 
And when you have these type of shows, it gives these young kids out here around the world, they think they should always be in a parent's conversation. And then the most parents, it's their fault as well, because they're treating their children like they're their friend instead of I'm your parent. Yes, it's going to hurt to teach your child the right thing, but that's what the fuck being a parent is about. Yeah, I mean, the whole family dynamic is so different. I mean, because Jaden is talking about how he's gay and has a boyfriend. Yes, that's so that hurt he, my feelings too. He wears too. dresses. Right. I don't know if he's gay or not. I've met him a couple of times. We've had, you know, yeah. conversations. I, I, I don't know what this man, young man does in his bedroom, right. but like the optics of it is just so crazy. Yeah. And not just him. So million, so many of the young men in the world today just seem confused to me. And I don't want to hear that shit, you know, you know, hitting me in my DM talking about whatever. The shit, we, I'm 63 years old. The shit is fucking confused, and I'm sorry. You don't you understand? I'm sorry. But what I do know, that when you go to heaven, when you die, you either got a dick or a pussy. Bottom motherfucking line. It ain't going to be no category. If they, When you die, unless you got a sex change, the universe knows what you was. Hmm. Now, you can pretend on that headstone that you was something else, when you leave here, but the universe knows what you are when you came here. And this is a fact. Yeah, I mean, the whole non-binary thing, the, the trans thing. Listen, if you feel like you want to present yourself as something else, that's that's cool. I got no problems. Yes, Listen, yes. I, I interviewed uh, Dwayne Curry, who's trans. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. She was well, she was born a man. She mm -hmm. now presents herself as a woman. She's from Oakland. She was a scammer. She was okay. on... Uh, trap queens and okay. everything else like that but you know but she was also like listen i'm not trying to we, we talked about on the interview how a lot of uh trans women you know there's a lot of murder rates because they try to fool men mm. into thinking that they're mm -hmm. really women and then when the man finds out he has a violent reaction which, which sometimes turns turns deadly which is not something that i promote at all yes. at all yes at the end of the day listen you know, if you got tricked, you just got to take that L and keep right. it moving. You know, and, don't 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 kill somebody and right. throw your life away over that shit. But in the same way, it's a very dangerous game that a lot of transgenders play because a lot of you know when I have kind of conversations with transgenders, they're not attracted to gay men. Mm. They're attracted to straight men. Okay, because they feel like they're women. Right. So they're not interested in a gay man. They don't want a man who's Crazy, interested. So yeah. it's, it's it's a very different type of mentality and you know yeah. and Dwayne curry was like yeah you know I, you know she's like listen i don't clearly i'm not a woman like it's clear right. you know i'm just kind of androgynous you know mm -hmm. everyone knows i'm a man but yeah she knows a lot of people that have lost their lives over that type of thing over fooling people that's um a dangerous game i know girls that's got killed yeah like tons of them like i'm serious that's not no good that is not a, that's nothing safe about that. Nothing at all. Yeah. You know, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? If a person can't accept you for who they are, then that's fine. Deuces. And to the guys that, if you even are suspicious, yeah, ask to see their baby pictures. <laughs> <laughs> You get in a car with a woman, you think that motherfucker might be a man, just be driving to my, can I see your baby pictures? And that'll tell the whole story. Throughout my dating life, whenever I thought that maybe this might be a man, I just said, I'm cool. I just, I, I, I literally just walked away because I'm like, if there's a small chance of this happening, yes. I would rather not open that door. Yeah. I'd rather leave that door closed. I like being into women. Like, you know, I've been heterosexual my whole life. Yes. I love women. I'll, I'll always love women. Shout out to everyone who is bisexual or gay. Yes. It's just not my thing. Absolutely. It's just not my thing. It's just and not we, my and, thing. And you've seen our programs over eight years. We never deviated. Deviated. Yes. We never talk about, we never talk bad about nobody if that's what you do. Ever. We just voice masculinity on this show. We voice loving women, um, respecting women, and teaching young men to do right by a woman. We don't talk about kill them. We don't tell anything like that. We want men, to, especially the young kids, because that's, 
our audience, Vlad, that when it's the young boys who come up to me mm. and talk to me the most. And I love that. And we are here for them. This is someone that we both know, Jamie Foxx. Ooh. We really don't know what's happening in that situation. As someone who's very active on social media, I would think that if he's okay, there would be a short video or at least a picture of Here's some the sort. thing. Me, Jamie Foxx, Marcus King, we was putting something together very special. Uh, Marcus King had flew over to London. Um, we was going to do, we was going to either take, we definitely was going to take it to Netflix. If that didn't work, we was going to go somewhere else because Jamie wanted to direct my Netflix special. Mm, okay. And, um... And we also was gonna do this podcast called Who Raised You? He he wanted me to do that. And believe it or not, when I'm when we're talking, Vlad, I was like, Lord, please let us live long enough to get this done. Not that I felt like we was gonna be sick. We're all just so busy that I didn't know if we was gonna have the time. So Jamie flew to Atlanta to finish the movie. And next thing I knew that had happened and I try to stay in touch, but when people get sick, I'm the kind of gentleman, I don't bother people because I don't want people thinking I'm seeking information to go tell someone else. What I do is I stay to myself, I pray for that person, hope that that person does well, but it now goes back to what you were saying. If it was a good situation, he would have definitely been on social media. Somebody would have definitely said something to us. So in that same breath, Jamie, if you um, see this, me, Vlad, the whole comedy community, we wish you um, the best because in my 63 years on this planet, he had high blood pressure. He was in a coma for a week and he woke up. So the comeback from something like that, I truly wish him the best, but... Um, He's been talented in so many other things. I hope he could pull this out. Wait, so Jamie was in a coma for a week? He was in a coma for a week. When was this? That's when he first went in. He was in, he had just woke up, so he was out for a week. Well, this, is, a, this is the current situation? Yeah, the current situation. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was out for a week. Yeah. And then they started releasing little by little um, that he had high blood pressure. So, um, again, what have me and you have talked about yeah. for eight fucking years? You go to the doctor all the time, get on whatever medication you need to get on. I'm on Crestor every day. What have we talked about, Vlad? Yes. yes. I had I had high cholesterol. My doctor told me that I am in risk of both a heart attack and potentially cancer with yes. that much cholesterol running through my system. Mm -hmm. I got on those pills, started to work out, yes. lost weight, made a big difference. Yeah. Uh, I also got tested recently for over 100 types of cancers. Good. There's this blood test you could take that basically finds cancer on a molecular level. Mm -hmm. So let's just say, oh, something in your toe looks a little weird. Let's just monitor it. You right. know, it may turn right. into nothing, but there's a potential for something going on with your toe. Mm -hmm. We can catch that early. Right. Remember, that's how Bob Marley died. Yes. He was playing soccer, broke his toe. They went to the doctors. They said, oh, you have cancer in your foot. We have to cut off the toe. What did he say? He said, nah, that's against my religion. Uh, Rastas so don't. So that's what happened? Rastas aren't supposed to cut off body parts, but more so than that is that he danced, you know, he was dancing on stage all the time and he was worried that with the toe gone, he wouldn't be able to balance and so forth. So he went and found a doctor that said, oh, we just need to cut off part of the toe. Right. And then he never got a follow-up. And then at one point he had a seizure and collapsed. And when they did a, a set of tests, the cancer had spread all through his body into his so brain. So it wasn't the CIA had put a tick. No, man. was that you know I actually said that on stage no, once. No, that's no, not true. No, oh, thank you that, that, to the fans that ever heard me say that. I say I ain't perfect. Yeah, I'm just one minute before. Let me keep, let me do that. <laughs> I'm not perfect. I, I fuck up too, people. Yeah. So Vlad is right. I know he did his research on it. So that's what truly happened. Wow. That's what truly happened. Okay. You know, I remember seeing the documentary and I was a Chris Blackwell, the guy who owned Island Records, basically said, Bob just didn't have very good people around him. He had a Man. bunch of yes men and a bunch of enablers. No one told him, go to the doctor. Right. Go to the, yo, this, you got cancer. Go to the doctor. Get a follow-up. You know, go to the doctor. And do you hear that to the celebrities? Like, and to the fans who know what me and Vlad talk about, send this to your favorite 
rapper, your favorite comedian, your favorite singer about go get checked up. It's not pushed enough. We always talk about, like, you know, we always talk about money. We always talk about the biggest car. We always talk about diamonds or whatever, mm -hmm. property and investments. We have to talk about health the most. And there's another thing I go to, um, Parentative Diagnostic. Mm -hmm. It's in Vegas in New York. It's a machine that they put you in. And what's crazy about it, here's the hustle. Sometimes they have Groupons that you can go take these tests freely because the test for your whole body is $3,000. I got a test on my heart the other day where they do a 3D vision of your heart. It arms up and it gets everything. If there's anything wrong, they could detect that all my results came back positive, excellent. Oh yeah, no, I got something. Uh, there's a company called New Amsterdam Genomics that basically okay. they, they test your whole genome. Yes. Right, and what they do is they find certain things that show, hey, you're like five times more likely to have Alzheimer's. You're mm. six times more likely to get this type of cancer. Okay. So I got tested for everything else like that. Okay. Ultimately, I came back clean, but there was like something about you potentially have some problems maybe in your muscles. So the doctor put me on these like muscle pills okay. that I'm just going to I want to get that taking. number for you. Of course. Right, listen, of course. I am addicted to fucking science and yes. health. That can because I'm going to tell the world right now. I got a secret. I'm really 109 years old because <laughs> nobody believes I'm 63. So I'm right. telling like I'm 109, 109. that looks 63. And I want young people to, I'm not doing nothing special. I just, I love me. So I make sure that um, I do everything right that I don't have stress. And if, a person brings any type of negativity into my life, other than my children, <laughs> you gotta go. Yeah, man, listen, I had Michael Jai White on my show the other day, and one of the things he said in one of our previous interviews that I brought up again, was I remember I asked him, because he is like 55, I yes, think. Yes, yes, yes. And he's in spectacular yes, shape. Yes, he is. Spectacular shape. And I said, listen, what's the, what's the secret? Like, what do you do that's different than what everyone else does? And he said the coldest thing, he said, look, your body is the only thing that you truly own. I mean, your body, your health is the only thing that you really own that somebody can't take away from you. So I kind of look at it like uh, it's it's nothing about kind of just this discipline thing. It's it's I get to do it. I get to try. I have the right like, you know, this is a right for everybody. Hmm. And people talk about like, oh, I don't have time. Like, OK, let's put these things together here because. You say you don't have time to, you know, to put into your health. There, I would argue that taking care of yourself gives is the only thing that gives you more time. Hmm. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, because you know you have more time on this planet at a better quality of life. Yeah. So you don't have time to work. Well, okay, you're gonna have less time than you know. So to me, that to me, it makes a lot of sense. The fact that one day. I'm going to have a cane and I'm going to wish I could run. I'm going to wish I could get out of here and go work out. I'll give everything I own to be able to do that one day. But guess what? I can do it right now. And I treat it as so. That's right. He said, there's going to be a time where I'm going to have a cane or be in a wheelchair and I would do anything just to run and jump and be mobile. So while I'm able to do it, I'm going to take full advantage of it. Mm-hmm. And look, you're right. I mean, he's right. The the cars, the clothes, the women, the you don't own none of that. That's so true. You don't own none of it. It's just there with you. And when right. you're gone, listen, my, my dad, I gave my dad a Cartier watch when he passed away. I took that watch back. Right. He can't take it with him. That's so true. You know, it was very, you know, it was a sentimental piece for me. Yes. But like, yeah, all he had was his health. And there was only a certain amount of time he was on this earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, man, that, that shit hit me. Uh, that shit hit me. Yeah, you got to love yourself. You, you got to love yourself. Mm -hmm. Praz from the Fugees just got convicted of 10 charges, including like money laundering, being an agent for China, witness tampering. The worst part about this, because I know Praz, mm -hmm. right? I've interviewed him. I'm the one that brought up the whole, you know, uh, 
donations to Obama, yes. anything else like that in our early interviews. Yes. You donated $1.2 million to, to Barack Obama's campaign? Yo, where you getting these information from? Is that not true? I'm starting to think you CIA, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, this yeah, is I mean, what I do. It's true. You know it's out there like, now. It's out. It's out in the in the in, in the in in the universe. Yeah, I did. To his to a super PAC. I got introduced to this super PAC called Black Men Vote, and it was like I said to go trying to register black men to go and vote, and so I donated the money to the super PAC. I mean, you, you're someone who who's made a lot of money, and you know, has invested his money and so forth. But 1.2 million is still a very significant amount. Why? Why did you decide to put so much of your own money into the Obama campaign? Because I believed in the cause, and I also just <laughs> I had the money to do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, listen. He was balling. He had the. He pulled up to my house. You know, we we hung out a couple of times. Right. He pulled up to my house in the Phantom. Yes. You know, I went to his house. You know, his uh, apartment in Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. He was telling me all about this crazy watch collection. And I'm like, oh, cool. But then when it all came down, <laughs> you come to find out that there's this dude named Joe Lowe who stole $5 billion from Malaysia. Yes. And was basically scamming. Well, not really scamming. He was basically using this company to try to like get out of being arrested and mm -hmm. everything else like that. He was running the, the, comp the money through Praz, who was donating it to, to Obama, donating it to Trump. You know, working as, you know, doing stuff for China to try to get yes. some guy indicted and everything else like that. And when you found out about the charges, because the other guy is gone. Yes, gone. He's in China. Yeah. They think somewhere with his billions. Right. Hiding out. Because he's supposed to be on trial along with Praz. Right. I remember I talked to Praz like last year. He actually called me to borrow some money from me for wow. a case. Yeah, i never said this before. Wow. He said, yo, I need to borrow some money for my lawyer's fees. And I said, uh, I mean, I don't know him. I'm, I know him, but I don't know him that well. And exactly, I'm like, exactly, exactly. Well, you want to maybe give me some of your watches as collateral, and we could Smart. do it that way. That's right. He said, Nah, I don't have access to those watches right now. They they took all that, or else I would just sell the watches. Right. But, he must have had a mean watch collection. Yeah, yeah. He had a mean watch collection. Wow. But he's like, I'll give you the money back, a twenty five percent interest. I said, No, bro, I I can't do it right now. I can't. Oh, good. So they took, they got the money back. Well, here's what he said. This is the point of this conversation, right? I said, so what's, what's going to happen? Are you, how much prison time are you facing? He goes, oh, no, no, it's, it's no prison time. It's just a matter of how much money they're trying to take right now. And I come to find out as I was doing more and more research, he had a deal on the table where he basically gave back most of the money. But he didn't agree to it. When he turned down that plea deal, a superseding federal indictment came in with 10 criminal charges, all of which he was found guilty of. So he could have gave the money. Walked away. And the crazy part is, is like, yo, Praz, you know that's stolen money. You know what I'm saying? I know it's nice to have it, and you feel like you didn't, well, you, I, didn't rip, I didn't rip anyone off for it, but you know that, that you know, for example, that money from that guy was used to fund the movie Wolf of Wall Street. Really? Yeah. That, and I talked to the actual Wolf of Wall Street. Yes, yes. I interviewed Jordan Belfort, and he, he said, yeah, this guy funded the movie, right? Wow. Red Granite Pictures bought the rights to your story. It was a company that was owned by a guy named Riza Aziz. Correct. Who later on had basically siphoned off so much hundreds of hard millions. To believe, right? He stole three billion dollars from the Malaysian government. He stole three billion dollars from the Malaysian government. Leonardo DiCaprio was given a uh, a Picasso painting as a as a as a payment for that movie, which he had to give back. Okay. Oh, he gave the painting back. DiCaprio showed up at trial. Yeah, I know that, but I didn't know there was a painting involved. Yeah, he said, "Y'all can have it back." He gave all the money back. He said, "Man, listen, I don't I don't know nothing about this shit. Y'all can have it back." Y'all could have everything back. <laughs> Praz, Which is a smart thing to do. Praz felt that money was more important than his freedom. Franklin saying Now he's facing 20 years. 20 years. And he's 50. Federal time. Best case scenario, 17 years. Absolutely. You getting out at 67 years old with nothing? 
But did they get the money? I don't know. I have no idea. Okay, so we got that side. So here's my side. When I first heard it, I'm going to be honest how I felt. I said, ooh, if that ain't the flyest shit I've heard in my lifetime. This motherfucker's a walking Jason Bourne. Only thing you need now is karate because <laughs> I thought it was brilliant from a, just a creative, if there's anything of a creative side of criminology, right? The black guy caught up with China, caught up with different parts of the world with Malaysia. countries like Malaysia and shit. That shit was impressive to me. Right, because, he was in North Korea at one point. Exactly. That's right. some, that's to me, was impressive, but again, no common sense because there's no price to freedom. None. I don't care if you got to walk the motherfucking street, homeless or a bum, because you can always get money. See, my accountants taught me years ago. He used to always say, oh, Kirkland, you got to open your fist. Don't keep your, don't keep your hand. So if you keep your hand tight, nothing leaves, nothing yeah. comes in. Water has to flow. It got to flow. Keep of power. your you hand move it open, around. right? Yeah. And I've always had that philosophy, keep my hand open. And it's, just, it's sad now to hear the behind the scenes information yeah. about that young man, especially when he had the opportunity to give it back. And he could have walked away? He could have walked away. From everything I've read and in my conversation with him, it sounded like he could have walked away and they just wanted the money back. But he chose- Same what, thing like you, Leonardo did. G he gave it back. Gave it back. So yo, but Leonardo wasn't involved. He was right, doing right, the movie. Right. I don't think Leonardo was facing any charges, but I'm saying like, man, listen, it, it's, it's ugly. And listen, I, I get it. Like when you look at the Fugees, you know, he's not the star of that group. Yes. It's Lauren and White. He felt good for a minute. All that money at the house, the cars, the the, the, the watches. But then, came back you know, to but then, you know, they broke up as a group and, you know, Wycliffe went on to become a star. Lauren went on to drop the greatest female rap album of yes. all time. Yes. He's still doing shows off of that. Proz had Ghetto Superstar, but really his music career kind of faded out. Right. But that's okay. That's okay. But what he chose to get into as an alternative was a bit crazy. You know, Absolutely. for me, like I said, here's an interesting question. I remember I brought this up on my Twitter. I'm going to ask you, mm -hmm. ask you this. If you had a choice, five years in prison or five years homeless and broke the entire time, meaning that, no, you can't make money while you're homeless. You're basically broke, panhandling to just scrape by and eating out of garbage cans and stuff like that. Which one would you do? Five years of prison or five years fully homeless? That's a good question, sir. Right. Because you do have a roof over your head in prison. Absolutely. And meals. Yes. Security. Yes. Someone might rape you, though. But then again, on the street, someone might rape you, too. So, yeah. you know, it's it's kind of... I'd rather be homeless. You'd rather be homeless. I'd rather be homeless. Because I've been to jail. Okay. And, have um, you been homeless, though? I've never been homeless. But I think I can manage being homeless. I think I, I can manage sleeping under a highway. Yeah. I think I, I don't can, know if I could. Yeah, I think I can manage. See, I've never really been to prison. I've been to jail here and there. Here's but. the thing that I tell people in the world. The human mind can do anything. Even my, I remember the first time I got locked up, you think that you can't do it. You think that you, oh, you can do it. The mind, the human mind, the human mind can do anything. And just to piggyback off this a second, I travel the world. You know, me, we talk about being in London. Sometimes I think we've even been in London at the same time. At the same time, I'm not sure. We may have, yeah. Yeah, or we going separate ways yeah, and yeah, yeah. coming in and out. And I'm just going to use this as an analogy. I see gay people all over the world. Hawaii, Australia. And you know what I say to me? People were so influenced to be gay. They could have been anything in the world. Because if you're influenced to be something, that means you had the mindset to be anything you wanted to be mm. and you chose that. This is how I feel. Yeah. So I feel that to go to jail, it might be fucked up for a minute, but you'll get used to it. But the key here on this show and anything we talk about is choices, ladies and gentlemen. 
surprised choices was bad. Even though he did something wrong, he still, from what you're saying, he had, choice. had the ability to give it back. Yeah. And be broke. And be broke. But free. But free. Right, because the Fugees were supposed to go on tour, but then once he got indicted, they had to cancel the tour. So oh, listen, okay, I'm broke. Let's can we go on tour. Yeah, you may not have that 20, 30, 40 million, but you'd have been able to eat. Yeah. You'd have been able to go to McDonald's. You'd be able to walk, right. walk down La Siena Boulevard. See your kid. Yeah, see your kid. Yeah. And man, see, that's how, and see, me being 63, I still have to do the right thing to the day I die. What I mean by that is you could be 97 and do something wrong and they would lock your ass up. Like that old man that shot that 16 year old. Yep. He was right there at the finish line. Yes. His old racist ass could yes. have just died peacefully in his home. Now he's gonna do life in prison, yep. right? Whatever's left. Whatever's left. However much he gets, unless he somehow gets let free, which I can't imagine. Right. Because he, this kid was just trying to pick up a sibling. He yes. was knocking on the door. There was no threatening. There, he didn't try to break in. Right. It's a black kid knocking on someone's door who gets shot in the head. Yeah. Well, I didn't know he got shot in the head. He got grazed in the head, yeah. Wow. Yeah, Did bad. he die? No. No, 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 no. He didn't die. Okay. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I was watching you know, the Dear Mama documentary on Hulu, mm -hmm. and what I didn't know was that after Pac was found guilty for the rape charges in New York, he was staying with Jasmine Guy, and when his mom came over to his house- he had like basically fucked the world written on his forehead. He had a, a rifle out and he basically was like, listen, uh, I want my, my homies to, to get in the car with me and drive out to the forest and I'm going to kill myself. And, and I talked to my man Edie from the Outlaws mm -hmm. and he said, yeah, that, that's true. Matter of fact, that happened multiple times. And he said at that moment, based on their bond with Pac and their age, they would have done it. They would have driven him out to wherever he wanted to go and watch him take his own life. Wow. Because he was just feeling like there was so much going on and he was going to prison and, you know, he's anti-police. So he's probably going to be abused by the COs, which he was. Yes. That he just was not going to be able to make it. And his mom walked him off that, off that ledge. Fresh as a motherfucker. Yeah. See, no matter how tough you are, your choices, like... Pressure can really destroy you. That's why you always got to try to do the right thing. That's like I'm always trying to put myself in good situations. And don't get me wrong, you could you could try, and then sometimes things can trip up because people out here in the universe can bring you badness, and they come disguised. I interviewed Lance on Rivera, mm -hmm. who was Biggie's yes, I know Lance very well. Who you know, there's a the whole Jay Z stabbing yes, incident that happened, right? right? And he was at Quad Studios when Pac got shot, mm -hmm. right? Now, what he told me, which I never knew this part of the story, and I talked to a couple people, they didn't know this part of the story either, yes. was this. Before Pac showed up to Quad Studios, according to Un, I don't know if it's true or not, okay. but according to Un, he said that him and Jimmy got into an argument on the phone. Mm -hmm. And they were both like, basically threatening each other on the phone. I'm gonna fuck you know who I am. I'm gonna fuck you know who I am. Right. I'm gonna fuck you. Oh, I'll see you when I see you. Yeah, I'll see you. So he's, after a conversation like this, and people were like, yo, this dude who you're talking about is serious. Like he's, you know, mm -hmm, he's about mm -hmm. this type of thing. Pac was like, oh, I'll be good. You know, I got my pistol with me. I got my homies who got their pistols with me. You know, Stretch was there and his right, bodyguard was right. there. He showed up anyways, and then he got ambushed. Tupac was on the phone arguing with somebody and he was, it was, it was really aggressive. And Tupac was saying, yeah, well, whatever, you know, suck my dick, you know, fuck you. When you see me, you see me. Right. And yeah, I'm going to pull up. I'm on my way there now. Right. So when he hung up the phone, they asked him, yo, who was you on the phone arguing with like that? And he said, some nigga named Jimmy Henchman. And the nigga said, nigga, is you crazy? Do you know who Jimmy Henchman is and what Jimmy Henchman might do to you? And he was like, for real? Like, he said, so do you think I should take a gun 
And they was like, nigga, you, we all ain't going to need guns going to the studio. Now, I don't know whether this is true. This is right, why it's right. a story. But like, you're walking into a situation that's already very hostile mm -hmm. because you want to make a few dollars to do this feature. Right, right, right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And in the, in the process, you almost get killed. You get shot five times. Yeah, my take on that, me being in that world at that time, and nobody's never said this, but th to me, this is the facts. Tupac started a war with the East Coast and West Coast that should have never happened. It should have never happened because Tupac knew who did it. It wasn't Biggie. It wasn't Biggie. Yeah. He knew, Tupac knew that. Right. In fact, one thing unmentioned, which I didn't know, was that after Pac got shot, he went up to the studio where Puffy and Lil Sean and them were, and he hid his gun like behind the piano. Mm -hmm. And right after the shooting, he called Big and asked him to go get that gun for him back. Mm -hmm. He ends up getting shot. He goes upstairs. He, he has his gun that he came to the studio with. He hides it in the piano. Mm -hmm. And then what everybody don't, don't know is that Pac called Big after that incident, right? And said Big, I left my gun in the studio. Send somebody to get it. I don't know about that part, but I know Tupac knew Biggie Smalls and um, Puffy had nothing to do with him getting shot. And that started a huge lie, um, like the woman who lied on Emmett Till. Yeah, who just died. Who just died. Yeah. She could ride in hell. Yeah, who made she ride in hell. Yeah, well, Pac started it and Vibe Magazine kept it going. They're the yes, ones who yep. coined East versus West. Absolutely, yes. I think when they said that, that brought a element of, you know, geographical beef that really was mostly just between certain people. Absolutely. It took it to a whole nother level. It took it to a whole different level. The same way to this day, I talk about the media. Mm -hmm. And I hope somebody picked this up. Watch this. The media is just as bad as the gun violence in this country with the shootings in the school as the person who shoots the trigger. And the reason why I say that, when they promote a school that got shot on Monday, there's a copycat two days later where you have influenced someone else to do the same thing. And what I feel, the media has to keep it local instead of worldwide, because by your promoting negativity. Yeah, but you, you can't keep media local anymore. No, 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 there's you no, can't. There's no such thing. Yeah, yeah. but I'm saying, oh, they the should local, just send it. The local newspaper is a thing of the past. Everything goes on the internet and, and can yes. spread. If they spreads. can, just keep it. It's too, far, it's too late now. It's too late. It's too late now, but do you understand what I'm saying? I, I feel like, you. I mean, you, listen, you, I, I, get, I get a lot of criticism you for it. interviews I've, I've done and so forth, and I, I get it. I get it. At the end of the day, I feel like if you're talking to an adult, they're allowed to put what they want out there. Yes. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it's it ends up being copycats or people feel like, you know, look, if I saw this type of interview and this type of person get famous off of this type of thing, usually bad behavior, I'm going to see if I could emulate that bad behavior. Yes. And follow in the footsteps and yes. become rich and famous because yes. of that. And sometimes it doesn't work out. And you, School you know, shootings. Your worst possible reaction. The guns is up to 174 this year and it's only fucking May. Yeah. No, it's fucked up. I guess Tupac was the one that came up with T to the motherfucking K. Yes. That, I didn't know that. Jack the Rapper. Was uh, it Jack the Rapper? No, Freaknik. 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 Okay. Yeah, it was that Freaknik. Because, you know, we used to do shows down there. Okay. So it was that, it was that freak thing in the early '90s. We were doing the show, and um, he was just a nice guy, man. He, Tupac was just a nice kid. He when I, when I saw him change, it was a combination of two different feelings. And what I mean by combination of two different feelings, I really thought he was getting me to do something amazing, because I was just thinking about all eyes on me when that album dropped. Hell of an album. Hell of a fucking album. I remember being in Brooklyn, getting ready for my birthday party that night and um, my 35th birthday party, matter of fact. And I had two gentlemen who did my birthday party who was just on their way to superstardom through my birthday party. And it was Jay-Z, 
Hov. Mm. I hired Jay Z to do my birthday party in 1995 in Harlem with Eric Von Zip, Frankie B, Haitian Jack, all of them was at my party. Ain't that crazy? Like crazy. all these are my, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call these guys my friends. They're my friends. Well, you know, I just did an interview with Keefy D. Yes, yes. And now he denied it, right? But according to Greg Kading, the guy who got the Keefy D confession, yes. he said that he actually flew Keefy to New York with the sole intent of setting up Eric Von Zip. It's possible. He said, but Keefy didn't want to wear a wire because they were worried that he might get frisked and he hadn't seen uh, Eric. In a while. In a while. And Zip is a nervous kind of guy. And zip, and Zip. So so he never wore a wire, but he they sent him out there. He even sent me a plane ticket. Yes. <laughs> wow. Of, 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 of the Keefy D yes, plane ticket. Yes. Just to show you was serious. Now, Keefy said he wouldn't wear a wire and it's all bullshit. But, you know, at the end of the day, who do you believe? But Eric Von Zip was trying to be set up yes. by, by the police. And I tell everybody this from Haitians. He ultimately and, died and walked yes, away cancer. from everything. Yes, yes. yes. And that was um, your friend. On Drink Champs, I talk about evolvement, mm -hmm. evolving. And I want the world to listen to me. If you live long enough, I think you grow to regret some of the things you've done in life. Of course. And um, to speak on Eric Bonsett, because I go way back to him with his mother. Yeah, you guys were roommates at one point. Yeah. 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 We, we go that way, way back. We owned a house up here at Chatsworth back in the day. You guys owned a house together? Owned a house together. Wow. Yeah. This, that close. This, yeah, we was that close. Um, to the point that one day, um, Zip got in bed together with a sawed-off shotgun. Because I wasn't in the bedroom, what happened when he got in the bed, the gun went off. If, I was been, if I'd have been in the bed, I'd have died. Why? The bullet came, came through the wall. Wow. Yeah, tr freak accident. But I'm here to always show him love because... We go way back to his mother and people, I hear the stories about Zip and I'm here to tell people we do crazy things. And um, I know that if he was alive, he would say, guys, forgive me, I, I'm sorry. And I would like for people to take my, my love that I have for that man and um, say that to the world because you live long enough, you just really start appreciating this shit. Like, I really appreciate breathing. I really, I'm excited when, when I come here. Like, you know, I'm excited. Like, I, I really love this shit, right? And I want everybody who, who listens to us, Vlad, uh, I want them to be excited about fucking life. Like, you really got to love this. This is, this is it. Yeah, that's all you got. This yo, this <laughs> this shit right here, yeah. ain't nothing like it. So I get that shit across. So if you if I ever met you, you ever met me, I know I've always inspired men and women to higher lights. And even with Zip, I had him um, get his life together. I, I just I've always had this ability since I was a kid to just motivate to get people to do the right thing. So. Salute to him. He's gone now. Um, and anybody who's going through something, pray and that time take its course and it'll all work out. Depending on the charges. <laughs> if it's murder, you got the, 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 the weight on that motherfucker is heavy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, like there's some things you can't come back from. Mm -hmm. Little thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Murder. Murder. Mmm. Well, you mentioned Freak Nick. Yeah. Uh, there's a documentary that's coming out about Freak Nick. And yes. uh, all the aunties out there are freaking out right now. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I'm going to say something to them. I, I want the people to not to be afraid of what you were. That's what I mean by involvement. If you was a hoe, when that came out, you was a hoe. You might be a church lady now. You might be <laughs> a, a judge. <laughs> Confront. Your 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 past, like your whole past. Yeah, say, girl, look at me. I was hoping I'm a judge now. <laughs> what people don't know, I'm going to watch this. <laughs> Maya Angelo, if she'd have died at 22, would have died a prostitute. Oh, she was a prostitute. She was a prostitute. Okay, I didn't know that. If Malcolm X would have died when he was a youngster, he'd have died a drug dealer and a pimp and a pimp. Yeah, he lived long enough to become Malcolm X. 
I want people to take their whatever wrongness they did in at Freaknik and use it not as a negativity, use it as a positive. Look how I wasn't just because I was out there freak nicking, right? <laughs> getting my pussy rubbed, maybe, or getting my titty rubbed, or you might have saw me sucking somebody's dick. Look at me now. I'm a, I'm a judge. <laughs> I'm a judge. I'm CEO of, of, of um, Microsoft, right? I'm running the Chrysler dealership. Like, show, yeah, say that was me. Oh, your kids say, Ma! You're like, yeah, they had my ass out. Yeah, they was like, hey, didn't I raise your ass right? That's all that mattered. <laughs> right. Uh, D.L. Hughley, you know, I, I asked him if he'd been a freak, Nick. He said, yeah. I said, uh, what was it like? He said, a lot of sex. He said, in fact, there was a girl who he had a crush on, and he, like, walked into some party, and she was, like, <laughs> fucking two dudes. And she was like, oh, hey. Oh, she was like, wipe her mouth. Hey, D.L. <laughs> I'll never forget this. I saw a chick who I thought I had a crush on with two guys. <laughs> <laughs> that crush just evaporate right and then and like, there. Wow. <laughs> and this is true story. And she looked, hey. I was like, oh my. <laughs> oh my God. It was called Freak Nick. Right. And it was so bad. Atlanta said, Atlanta says you can't come in no more with that bullshit. It's too much. You know, you know how freaky shit gotta be for Atlanta to go, that's enough. <laughs> in the 90s? Come yeah. on, man. But see, then when I was hanging there. It's, I've always been careful my whole life from touring with R. Kelly, from touring with the crazy rappers in the world. I always stayed in my lane. So I saw things, but I never got involved. What was the craziest shit you saw, Freak Nick? Um, women getting finger fucked on in the middle of the street. Huh. Yeah, exactly. And they were okay with it? They was okay with it. I did a movie called It Ain't Easy with Mac 10 about pimps, right? Let me show you something. When my daughters was born, I never watched that movie because it was pimps is disrespected women. Hmm? I respect the women so much that regardless of what I say on stage about bitch, whatever, that's just to get my point across. But my respect for them is on 10. What do you think is happening with Jonathan Majors right now? That whole situation. Oh, that hurt me, man. Because listen, I think it's hard to argue that Jonathan Majors is, I would say, the hottest, newer There's no doubt about actor it. in Hollywood. I went to right see now. Creed myself, and I know I made them rich because I went to see it nine, ten times. At the theater. At the theater. You liked it that much. Let me tell you the part I liked. I never I haven't watched it yet. Oh, you haven't watched it I yet? Watched it oh, yet. I can't tell you then. Yeah, you okay, fuck it. Go ahead. Go okay, ahead. okay, you sure? It's been out long enough. It's my yeah, own fault. Yeah, it's your yeah, fault. Go ahead. It's my own fault. Go ahead. It's a part when um, Creed gets upset with Jonathan. Mm -hmm. And he says that um, he wanted to fight him for the title of the world. So they have this argument because he really got played. He goes on first take on in the movie with um, uh, Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith, yeah. And while they're there, Stephen A. Smith said, hold on for him. We got a call coming in. Because um, Creed is on there trying to talk about his, give his opinion on the fight, et cetera, because this guy just lost. So Jonathan Majors <laughs> comes and says, what, you need a hug? He said, everybody know you're a fraud and your father will be disappointed in you right now. Hmm. So when he said, um, so I challenge you to the heavyweight title of the world. And he said, it's on. He said, it's on. He said, run it. He's like, motherfucker, I'm running. So they both was going back saying that word. And the way they did the angle to cut, God damn it, I was in, in, <laughs> <laughs> I was in. So I go back to that movie to see that part every time. Because what Rocky movies do to me, ladies and gentlemen, is that I really cry at a Rocky movie. And let me tell you why. Because of determined nation mm. determination is in me and when i see a movie from rocky to creed the not giving up to do what's necessary to win in life to sacrifice whatever it is to sacrifice in life that's tk that's tk kirkland as a side note i interviewed uh neil degrasse tyson yes recently and what he told me which i never knew 
Mm-hmm. The movie Beverly Hills Cop. Yes. Which stars Eddie Murphy. Mm-hmm. Do you know who originally was cast to be in that movie as a star? Sylvester Stallone. Yes. Yes. You heard about that. I knew about it. Yeah. I, duh, yeah. Because <laughs> if you look at it, there's nothing specifically black about that role, except for that one scene at the hotel where he yeah. was like the whole Michael Jackson. Right. You know. And that's when Sylvester Stallone was a mega star. It was a mega star. Right. So, you know, a Detroit cop, you can kind of yes. see it. Yes. You can kind of see it. Yes. Eddie Murphy came in and really yeah took it shifted, to a whole another level took it to a whole level and mm-hmm. that was like the movie that like you know we talked about this you know me and neil was like because eddie talked about this as well he said up to that point when you see a black man in a movie he's usually following the white guys right he's kind of fumbling behind them and, and they're the boss and he, yes yes barely hills cop switched all that let me tell you i've been around long enough to tell every comic in the world the only superstar ever to touch the mic and the screen was Eddie Murphy. And let me say to what I mean by that. Superstar, yeah. There's great comedians. Right. Kevin Hart's obviously had a good movie career. Yeah. But I wouldn't put him in the superstar status of Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy is a motherfucking superstar. Yes. And I hung with them. And I seen the effect. Nobody, no disrespect when I say this. Nobody wants to fuck Chris Rock. Nobody wants to fuck Kevin Hart. No one wants to fuck these other comics. You, they, All the they, girls want to fuck Eddie Murphy. Everybody. Yes, he, was, he was a full-blown sex symbol. He was a full He did it. He did his stand-ups in a leather yes, one-piece suit. They love that motherfucker, yo. Yes, the hell they did. Yeah, I remember. And I happened to be born on the same day as years hell because uh. they love me too. They love me too. Well, let's go back to Jonathan Majors for a yes. second. So listen, like I said. This was the hottest dude in Hollywood right now. Mm-hmm. Not only did he co-star in Creed, but he is a full-blown Marvel yes. Marvel character yes. now, Kang the Conqueror. Right. There's multiple movies that are built around his character. He's mm-hmm. already been in the Loki series and, and everything else like that. And it all came crashing down. Yes. Arguing with his girlfriend in yes, a text. about a text message. I guess some other girl was texting him. She saw... And it sort of became like a Rihanna Chris Brown incident, from yes, what I understand. Yes. She probably tried to grab the phone and maybe hit him, and he mm-hmm, hit her back. Right. And I guess he knocked her out. I didn't know that. Well, he did something to her that hurt her, and I think he actually called 911. And then she pressed charges. Now she has a restraining order. Oh, she's going to go the whole well, nine Well, but yards. now other women have come forward. I saw that too. And are now cooperating with the district attorney. Right. And everyone's just sort of sitting back to see what Disney's going to do. Yes. Because he's been dropped by his management. He got dropped by his PR. You know, he didn't go to the Met Gala and all this other Mm -hmm. stuff he was supposed to do. And if Disney drops him, that's going to be the, oh, shit. Here's what I say in situations like that. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to listen to me very carefully. Sometimes when a man or woman makes a mistake because people are human, you can't drop them. You got to say, look, young man or young lady, you have a problem. We're going to stick by you and we're going to walk you through this so that we can get you back on track. Because obviously you had a situation that um, hurt at you, but we're not going to give up on you. And when you do that to people, it can be devastating. Sometimes you get together, put your arm around someone, especially you was riding the wave to success. Mm-hmm. If you're going to ride the wave with me to success, you got to ride the wave with me if I make a mistake. True. And, um, yes, I'm, I'm, I apologize if I hit someone. Yep, I, I apologize. But don't leave me. Like, listen, you're going to, you're going to, listen, we're going to work with you and we're going to ride this out and we're, and we're going to fix this, but we're not going to dump you. That's just my opinion. Yeah. No, listen. I mean, hopefully he gets he gets through this. Hopefully he gets through it. And, you know, as a, just a word of caution to all the men who are watching this, if a woman hits you first- Walk away. Walk away. Walk you're away. not really going to get that hurt. Yeah, you're not going to- You're going to hurt her way worse than she, yeah, gonna, she walk can away. hurt. Unless she, she's a female MMA fighter or some- And you, and you can't or some, win. Or some monstrous, like, woman. You might take get a few bruises, get a few scratches- but 
it will always look bad on you if you hit her back. Absolutely. Look at Dana White. Everyone talks about how Dana White hit his wife. Yes. But if you watch the video, she hit him first. Yes. And he just like slapped her back or mm -hmm. something. But he's the one that's seen as wrong yes. in this situation. Because quote unquote society. In society. Yes. Listen, life ain't fair. It's okay. okay. You know, women say they want equality, but every woman still wants special treatment. Yes. And that's just the way it is. Right. You can get mad at it, but you're not going to change it. Yes. And it's other circumstances. Other circumstances, Dana owns his own business. Nobody's going to fire him. Well, and he works for UFC. Yeah, but he's like he a boss over there. I mean, he's a boss, but he can still get fired. Yeah. Oh, he can. Of course. Okay, okay. It's, yeah, it's, but it's a they, big corporation now. Yeah, yeah. but he's, a, he's the face of that, of that is, business. but he can get fired. Okay, okay. Just like how Vince McMahon got fired from WWE at one point. Yes, but you saw the move he made. Yeah, he came back, yeah. God, it's damn. Cool. Yeah. And now, and now WWE and UFC have merged. Yeah, I know. But Woo, it's, Woo. There's all types of boss moves going on over you there. You see that move? It's billion dollar moves. You have to sell that motherfucker? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Was that clever? It's crazy. It's crazy. Was that, yo, that right there, other than prize. Because <laughs> this is legal. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it's all legal. Yeah. The, one of the most fucking brilliant moves. Yep. Checkmate. Checkmate, motherfucker. I'm back. Checkmate. Yeah, man. But yeah, but the Jonathan Major shit, it's, it's ugly. It's ugly. It's ugly. And like I said, hopefully he gets through because I like him as an actor. And let me give people uh, some wisdom. I think we said this before. If you're a basketball player or acting, you're young, stay single. It's the best way unless you know in your heart you really want to be in a relationship. Stay single. Or if you want to get married, make sure you really want to be married. And I'm going to repeat it. Make sure you really want to be married. That means you no know, texting other women. Yeah. No going out to dinner with other women. Mm -hmm. No going to no movies. Not just going, not going to have lunch. Yeah. Like your woman, your wife is your world. Yes. From farting to sleeping to traveling. That's marriage. Mm -hmm. If you're like me, like dating, like different women, do not get married. Marriage is not for you. Not, marriage is not for me. Yeah. Mm. And I don't date, but I'm just saying... If I had time, don't, I wouldn't, I don't, I, it's not that I w don't want to be married. I don't want to put myself in that position if I got attracted to someone and this is supposed to be my woman and I cheat on her. Speaking of marriage, have you seen the Tyrese stuff that's been out there? Tyrese made a video I guess what had happened was at that point, the judge had granted his ex-wife 10,000 a month in child support. Yes. He made a video calling for a protest yes. on the on the steps of the Atlanta courthouse. He called Martin Luther King III. Yes. <laughs> Benjamin Crump. Yes. To come protest to get his child support lowered. Yes. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't know history as well as everyone else, but I'm pretty sure Martin Luther King didn't go you know, sacrifices his life to get uh, someone's child support lowered. Yes, yes. I, I think he fought for something a little more noble than that. It, you know, I, you know me, and, to call, to... and to call the grandson of, of Martin Luther King. I thought that was interesting. I was or like, Benjamin Crump, who, who fights for civil, civil rights, rights yes, and, yes. and police brutality yes. to come and try to get your child support lowered. I, I honestly think Tyrese is crazy. Like my interactions that with right him- right there- yeah. Absolutely. I, 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 my interactions with him, we've DM'd each other and he yeah. sent me these voice notes and it sounded like a crazy person that I'm yes. dealing with. Honestly, it sounds like I'm dealing with a crazy person. Yes. And let me give, I always like to give the game and Tyrese to any man that's going to court for child support. I'm going to put y'all up on game. So listen, you can make $2 million a month, ladies and gentlemen, and have a P&L. Every person goes to court for child support. The woman has to bring a... Her P&L, how much she makes profit it. Profit and loss. Profit and loss. That's what it's called, P&L. You can make $2 million a month. You got write-offs that you pay every month. Whatever that bottom line is what you pay. So, Tyrese, it's not that you're making a lot of money. 
is what you did when you went to court, your P&L was wrong. If you had your profit and loss a little tightened up more, you wouldn't have to pay 10000 a month. Now, too, Tyrese, and to any man going to court, never disrespect the judge. Oh, Are yeah. you fucking insane? Tyrese, because of all that nonsense, yes. he was held in contempt. He yes. was ordered to pay $636,000. Yes. And not only the child support, but his ex-wife's lawyer fees yes. on top of it. You do not. So that whole grandstanding, all the blah, blah, oh, it's so unfair. Well, we saw it coming. Protest, the, 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 this crooked judge yes. and everything. I don't understand why people do this. I don't understand why people poke at judges and, and district attorneys and the such. you got to be like out the, your fucking like these mind. These are somehow robots yes. that have no reaction to you insulting them. They're human just like you. Yes. They're petty just like you. Yes. Your feelings get hurt, their feelings get hurt. And when you're doing shit and you're a big celebrity and you're a social influencer and you do these big statements calling people crooks and thieves and liars and, and they have to get all this hate mail and all these angry DMs from your fans right. saying that they're going to kill you That's and so all that true. stuff. You're right, you're right. You know what they do? They're like, okay, got it. I'm going to prove my point. back. And these people all have more power than you. For some reason... These social media guys, whether they're, they're they're rappers, singers, actors, athletes, somehow feel that if they get the public, they get their followers, you know, behind them, that whoever they go against will suddenly crumble and die. Like like that, it doesn't happen that way. It doesn't happen that way, and that's the myth of this life, this generation. Yes, I've never seen nothing like that. I was disappointed to see that he was talking. I said, well, "You're not Donald Trump and Tyrese. I love you." I know you're going to see this, but my man, you can't talk shit to the judge. This is the same guy. In. This is the same guy that, what more do they want from me? The yeah. crying on camera, the can't do erratic that. behavior. And to the, all the men, y'all do my, y'all, y'all come to my podcast, the TK Kirkland show. And then you know what I say? Play the hand that you dealt. If you got to pay ten thousand a month, to pay ten thousand a month, ten thousand. Listen, if your income goes down, you could always go back to court. Back to, you could say I'm not making yes, as much money. Yes. blah blah. Instead Let's of embarrassing, the, yes, yourself, yes, yes. That's where that's where it's all going. Any man from this moment on, do not go on social media and um. Be, Give out your information on what's going on in your life. That's not what men do. Yeah. We shut the fuck up. We handle it quietly. Yeah. That's it. And let the results do the best you can the right way. Like you said, I can't do nothing for you. You can't do nothing for the person. Right. You got to do it the right way. Get you a good attorney. Yeah. Go through the process. Go through the process. That I think the best example of this is Tory Lanez, who during his whole trial went on social media, made songs about Megan, taunted her, you know, and, and he had a lot of people behind him. A lot of people were Tory's innocent. She's lying. She shot herself, whatever. She's trying to bring a black man down, whatever, whatever, whatever. He got found guilty by 12 jurors in a court of law. Yes. His own. Social what do you media think happened posted? with that? What do I think happened with that? Yeah, why? How do you? What's your opinion on how he got taken? I've, I've, been, I've been saying this. I've been saying for the past like a year before he got convicted, I say that he's going to prison, and he DM me all angry and shit like that, trying to figure out what I knew, and I'm right. like, what I know is what's out there. Yes, so I'm going to tell very, you. It's very clear what's out there. You know, Tony Yayo said it best: if you shoot somebody and they survive. And they're going to take the stand against you. You never go to court. Tony has never seen this in his whole life. Everyone he's known that was involved in a shooting, if the person lived and they're willing to get on that stand and say, so-and-so shot me, they're going to be found guilty. You can't get over that part. Wow. It's almost Crazy. impossible to get over that part. Okay. Now, if there's no witnesses, the guy's dead, you know, I mean, it's yes, there's yes. no camera footage, whatever, yes. you might be able to reasonable doubt right but in this case yo megan america's sweetheart got on the stand in tears and said that guy shot me after we were arguing 
And, you know, when, when they went to court, Tori's defense was, oh no, the other girl, Kelsey, shot her. But Tori had an Instagram post where he's saying that she didn't shoot him. He was replying to a random Instagram post where someone was like, oh, Kelsey shot her. And he responded, no, he didn't. That was given to the jury. Wow. Tori had a phone call from jail talking to Kelsey, basically inferring his involvement in the, and apologizing in his role and all this type of shit. That motherfucker was talking on the phone in jail? It, no, he was recorded. No, I know that a, part, but he was on the yes, phone in jail? Yes. Everybody know you don't talk on the fucking phone. You don't phone. talk on the phone in jail. They record that they shit. They record that shit. And, and so what's wow. happening now, what's happening now, he was found guilty on all charges. He's facing 20-something years. He went and got uh, Jose Baez, who was uh, Casey Anthony's lawyer, who he's paying 200000 a month in a retainer. They're trying to appeal it to the judge. And, and in the process... Once again, Tory leaves this long voicemail saying the DA is crooked and how he falsified the DNA results and, you know, how- On the phone in the jail? Well, he, this is now, this is a statement he put out. Okay, okay. He publicly put it out on his own Instagram. Okay. Saying that as a black man, you know, he's being falsely, you know, uh, convicted and everything else like that. He's, he's now doing the same shit that got him put in jail in the first place. He's now trying to fight this thing outside the courtroom, through his fans, trying to get people on his side when all that shit doesn't matter and all he's going to do is piss off the DA even further. And to the guys, celebrities, your fans can't do shit for you. Your fans you. can't do shit for you. Your fans no, can't do shit for you. they can't do nothing. You. In fact, they can probably hurt you more than yes. that. You know, yes. they can show up to the courtroom and act a fool like in the YSL case. You know what I'm saying? When people getting kicked out of the courtroom yeah, and that, everything else. That's a, a circus down there. It's a fucking circus. A circus. It's a circus. Even the judge. Even the judge. Yeah. The, 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 the whole I've never thing. seen nothing like I, that. I, I've never seen anything like this. No structure whatsoever. That, they're, they're still in a, a jury selection. They haven't even started the trial yet. Jury selection is taking months. Yeah, it's wild over there, man. It's, it's, it's wild. And listen, uh, I don't know, Tori, apart from a couple of DMs, we have no intersection with each other uh you know if he beats the case cool good for him so he did get retried no he is awaiting sentencing but they're trying to basically do a retrial okay that's not i've never heard it done, done like that before can it be done that way i guess it's an appeal of some sort or they're trying to get the judge they're basically trying to say it's a mistrial and try to have it retried okay well we wish him well we wish him well. I liked it. I didn't know about him until like the his, shooting, I like right? His, I like his music, man. Listen to me. When he, sh I didn't know nothing about him today. Yeah. And I listened to his album, it's and good. I said, "What a fucking talented a man!" Yeah, he's a talent. Yeah, he is talented. He, he thinks, yeah, because I think Tori somehow thinks that I somehow have something against him. And I remember we interviewed, uh, you know, the lawyer Mo Ganga that basically spoke out for him and mm -hmm. even said that Megan could probably sue him if he wins. And I sent that to him. Be like, listen, we're not. We're going to tell both sides. You know, I don't know you. So okay. I'm going to say my side, but if someone tells a different side, yes. we're going to play that too. Yes. But at the end of the day, like, yo, know, you can't fight this thing out in social media. It doesn't work. The I, jury doesn't doesn't care. Yes. The judge doesn't care. The prosecutor doesn't care. Your own lawyer will tell you not to do this shit. I'm Your own lawyer to, will tell you not to, to shut the fuck up. I, it's the, I, mean, I, I think the attorneys are fucked up because here's my thing. If an attorney is that smart and these people don't listen to the attorney, you deserve to go to jail. Right, yeah, yeah. Tony Yeo said that if I if he was Tory Lanez, he would have slapped his attorney after getting you know up to twenty years. Yes, but then again, the attorney if if the, your attorney is telling you to plead out and you're not listening and you're saying no, I want to throw hail mary, which I think is what he did because he's never been to prison before and he probably is scared to death. He's a little guy, whatever else. I get it, but at the end of the day, no attorney wants to get twenty years on their record. Right, someone they they defend. Right. What you do know you know think he would have gotten if he took a deal? I'm thinking he probably would have been facing maybe five. Get on two. Yeah. It's a state case. Yeah. 50%, two and a half. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. And you're out. You're out. And I'm He'll probably you. avoid getting deported because if he, you know, oh, once yeah. he gets sentenced and does his jail time, it's going to just like Shine, they'll send him back to Canada and he won't be allowed to re enter the US. Okay. And, I, and the reason why I say that, I had a friend who went to high school with me, Gregory Lockett, one of the fastest motherfucker runners you could imagine. And got a scholarship to Auburn. But he transferred from Steiner, went to um, Weekway. 
came back from Auburn, I guess, you know, with city boys, you don't, you're not used to that type of living. It's um, culture shock. Comes back home, he's in the car with um, three guys. They do a drive-by shooting. Damn. Somebody dies. Oh, the two guys take a deal. Got out in 10. Gregory Lockett took it to trial. Lost. Wind up dying in prison at 56 years old. Never got out. But the other guys been out. Yeah. Because they took the deal. Yeah. Yeah. Me, me and Live Jennings were talking about this. I think he had a cousin that was uh, involved in a shooting. They offered him seven. He refused to take it. Ended up getting life. Dang. Happens all the time. I mean, th this is why Big Meech and Terry took those 30-year deals. Okay. People thought they were crazy, but Terry's out. Right. If they had gone to trial, they would have gotten something to life. Oh, yeah. And, and they, they would have been... You got to always leave a loophole. Yes. For just in case. Just in case. For your Hail Mary. Right, because, you know, laws change yeah. and so forth. Unless you're a mass murderer, which yeah. laws don't change right. when it comes to that. right. A lot of times the drug shit, especially, you know, the crack versus cocaine, you know, yeah. ratios, like things change, new programs come in. Trump had a bunch of stuff that let a lot, a lot of people out. Yes, right, it's true. You know, early and so forth. You know, I just interviewed Tony Lewis uh, Sr. Mm -hmm. from D.C., one of the big kingpins yes, along yes. with Ray Edmond. Mm -hmm. He got out after yes. 34 years. Mm -hmm. He had gotten way longer than that. Right. So, yeah, it, it could happen. This is why people don't t blow trial. This is why they avoid the two life. Yes. You can get three years to life and end up doing 100 years. That's right. So, you know, uh, Tax Stone was just found guilty. Uh, in I, the I love of, Tax. That was my man. Love Tax. That was my man. The um, thing about Tax, when he got ready to go away, see, this is what happened. I met, my son told me to do Breakfast Club. Mm -hmm. From Breakfast Club, I met you. Okay. From you, I met Tax. Yeah. So, Y'all two, we was we was hitting it off. Me and Tax was hitting it so good, and our numbers just so because this is we gotta remember. Oh, so you did an interview on Tax Stone? Yeah. Okay, it got was it. was like amazing. This is before I knew what podcast was, right? It's I'm I'm learning. I used to call you guys iPod, right? That's how <laughs> fucked up I was. <laughs> um, with him, we was going to London. I was gonna we was gonna do a comedy slash podcast oh, okay because this is right before i got mine so soundcloud was interested in us doing this together we had everything ready to roll but i never listened to any of his work i never listened to what kind of man he was if if you if anybody can remember way back i had my instagram and it was a, we went to a soundcloud party and it was one of the guys from SoundCloud, me, um, Tax, and Charlemagne. And when I found out his spirit, I said, ah, oh, man, Tax, he's hating on these motherfuckers. He was a hater. And it hurt me because when I think about Tax, I think about um, uh, Triple X who got passed away. XXS and Tassion. Yeah. His team and X team wanted me to mentor them, but I didn't take it seriously. I didn't take podcasting seriously. Like it wasn't on my radar like that. And what I see what has happened to my career and how young kids listen to TK, like they listen. I go, wow, I really have a voice out here. I really, people really respect me. So to see Tax um, go to jail, but they didn't get him on murder. I think they got him on manslaughter. They got him on manslaughter. He's facing 25 years. Me and his lawyer were talking the okay. whole time. So so he's only facing 25 because of his priors, correct? I'm not sure. He He's already done six. Yeah. Oh, oh he pleaded guilty to like a federal gun charge. Yes. So he got six, which he pretty much has done. Yes, yes. But the, the new the new charges, the manslaughter and, and everything else like that, have a worst case of a 25. Uh, I believe May 25th, he's supposed to get sentenced. He was mm. supposed to get sentenced last month, but it got pushed back. Okay. Now, listen, Tax wanted to do an interview with me before, uh, during the trial. Yes. And, you know, I, I talked to his lawyer about it. And as I predicted, his lawyer was like, this is a horrible idea. And I told Tax, I'm not going to do it. Smart. Thank you. I'm not going to do it. I know this will get huge numbers. 
whatever views viral i don't i yes. don't really care because like you can't there there could potentially be something in this interview that you say that could potentially people affect don't understand this case that. so true and it's an open murder case and i sincerely care about you yes you know we, we were friends we were hanging out for a whole year between the shooting and him getting arrested yes. in fact my interview with him was his last interview before okay. he went in I never put the interview out okay. because I was once again worried that there was something in that interview that good, could potentially good, affect this good. case. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not going to do it. And he got mad at me and whatever else. And I'm like, listen, you could go to someone else. if You want. You know, okay. I'm not the only podcast out there. There's right, a lot of people right. you can go to, you know, that have big and followings. And for the people who don't know who he is, this motherfucker was by now. Oh, he would have been big. He would have been like Gillian Wallace. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, he, he would have been up there. He would have had a, a bunch of deals on the table, whatever else. But- you know, the problem with this case was that I remember we talked about this, how in New York, see, if this was somewhere else, it would have been a very different case. Yes. Because Troy Ave was out there basically getting people attacked who didn't like him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he got in this, uh, this one gay rapper, I Love McConan, beat up on stage yes. by this guy, Banger. Mm -hmm. you, know, he, you know, this journalist got beat up. Once, you know, because he had said something negative about him. Yes. Troy threatened me over text message at one point. Like he was basically had a chip on his shoulder and was like basically trying to push his weight around, you know, for everyone who didn't support him on okay, his way. Okay. Up. And he had a bad album one time. He had, he had Listen some songs. Listen to me. I was in New York. He had some songs that people were No, no, I got to say this before you, before you finish. We was in New York, group of friends. We drive, I think we're going to do a show. I said, who the fuck is that? And they said, Troy, I, man, I was a fucking fan he okay. he he was he was getting in his groove yes you know what i'm saying but he had a chip on his shoulder and he wanted to show everyone how tough he was and he was using this dude to basically you know as his muscle to okay. go and push people around okay the situation happened where he tried to do the same thing with tax stone and you know based on what the trial is saying i don't know what really happened okay. was okay. that you know Someone got killed in the process. Yes. Because not everyone's going to get pushed around. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I think it was a tussle. It was a tussle. Yeah. There was a gut involved. Right. But, you know, not everyone. And, you know, if you look at the situation from a Florida point of view, it could be seen as stand your ground. Absolutely. Hey, listen, here's a guy that's out beating people up. He came to attack me. They even said that he, he even told his man to go punch Tax Stone in the face. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, my life was in danger. I had a gun on me, whatever. But in New York, you're not allowed to use the victim's past in the trial. Okay. So the victim is being painted as this good kid who just got wow. caught up in a bad situation okay. as opposed to someone that was out beating people up. Right. You know what I'm saying? And in the process, Tax got found guilty and it was fucked up. Now, but the worst part about this is, and I talked to his lawyer about this, the worst, worst, worst part about it is, was that Tax had a phone in Rikers Island. I didn't know that. And they managed to intercept the messages where he talked about his case. And according to one of the jury members, that was an impossible step to get over. When he himself was admitting to what he did in his Whoa. own messages, he just got too comfortable with that phone. Whoa. In jail. And that's the thing. They think they're not listening. They got, they got to the, everything. To anybody that might go to jail and you get a phone, damn it, they got this machine in the fucking cell. It's called cell. a stingray. A stingray. Yeah. That's picking up all the packets. All, all the, the text messages. All, all the everything. everything. It's all right there. They will catch your ass. You think you're being so slick. You think you're being so slick. Phone. Yeah. Okay. This is 2023. Yes. They you know got what I mean? He got, he got buried with that. And then on oh, top man. of it. You really on top of your game, Vlad. I love man, that. Listen, on top of it, Casanova, who was there after the situation happened, he called his man up and he said something to the effect of, oh, Tax just, just shot, it, shot off his gun, not knowing his man was under some sort of surveillance and they were tapping his phone. So this whole communication once again was being played to the jury. And everything else like that. Man. To me, it's once again crazy. Like, I can't imagine talking to someone about a crime, especially over the phone. Me they do Tax, it all the time. Me and Tax hung out for a year. I remember when the shooting happened and the video started circulating, I called him up and I said, yo, are you good? He said, yeah, I'm fine. I said, that's it. I said, I don't want to know nothing else. Yes. We have never had a conversation about th this shit. 
I didn't want to know. I didn't want to, I didn't know who's listening, who's yes. what. I didn't want to be part of this case. Yes. I never talked to him about it. But to, to, to think that people who have criminal backgrounds who've been through this are talking on phones and everything, because that's how Casanova got locked up, you know, for his own RICO case. DMs, text messages, all that type of shit. People really think it's a fucking game, man. People end up doing the worst damage to themselves. The the snitches and everything else. You know, Troy Ave snitched on him, took the stand, and everything else like that. But the jury, and you see what they do to Troy Ave. You heard today? He's going to jail too. Damn. Yep. I guess he didn't snitch on enough people. Ain't that a motherfucker? Ain't that a motherfucker? Yo. Yeah. It's 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 uh it's a train wreck, man. It's I'm so glad I'm corny. <laughs> I know, right? Do you hear what the <laughs> fuck I'm saying, yo? Like, I'm glad the shit that I did about 500 years ago. I'm glad my nickname is Housewife. That's what my kids call me. Mm. I my leaf blower. I cook dinner. I mop. I clean every day. That's what I do. And I'm happy. What's interesting is uh, I actually brought this up. I think this originated in the Joe Torrey interview. Okay. And Joe was talking about how he came up under Robin Harris. Yes. And he mentioned how Robin Harris didn't like D.L. Hughley. Yes. So I had D.L. Hughley here the other day. And I brought that up. He goes, yes, that's true. I said, why? He said, because I was friends with T.K. Kirkland. <laughs> <laughs> and T.K. and Robin did not. That was where the real beef yes, started. Real and beef. I asked why. He goes, well, it was a very different T.K. back then. Deal and Robin didn't really get along? Nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Deal didn't come when Robin was alive. Okay. Yeah, because they didn't get along. Yeah, Robin, Robin, Robin was known for knocking your ass completely the fuck out. He didn't care. Pistols, well, he whooped everybody ass. It's about you talking about. He, 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 puts, he put him down. He, I could name names. He didn't care. Um, and if you stole his jokes or you got into it with him or something like that, he was, you know, Robin was about that life. Why? Robin didn't like me at all. Really? No. Probably because of TK. But probably. Wait, what? Robin didn't like TK and I was TK's oh. protege. So, now that this is all out there, rest in peace, Robin Harris, yes, yes. one of the best that ever did it. So here's What the... happened between you and Robin? <sighs> Number one, is all this correct? It's correct. Okay, got it's, it. It is down all to right. the fucking got T. Got it. Okay. Here's the thing. <laughs> oh, motherfucking blast. This, this is how I dig up my info. I love you, man. <laughs> you on point. On point. It's fucking hilarious. In stand-up comedy, everybody has a click. Mm -hmm. When we started out in 1985, I was just this, this kid who was known for stealing Charlie Murphy's watch. So word got around about that. Word started getting around. Got it. 1985, now, now and that happened in 1982. Now, mind you, nobody was doing stand-up comedy then. When this happened with Charlie Murphy and his brother, this was 1982, we was doing Beverly Hills Cop. Black comedy hasn't exploded yet in the world. 1985, we start, me, Robert Harris, good, but the man is Michael Williams, who is the, another architect of the comedy world who doesn't get his credit. He is who started black comedy, how all these people around the universe who making money. Right. Because Michael Williams had this dream and vision. Right. And this is not Michael K. Williams, the actor. Yeah, no, not Michael, yeah, Michael Williams. Michael Williams. Just wanted yep, to make that good. Good, glad you brought that up. You're absolutely right. So um, I started getting funny. But what Robert Harris didn't have that I had was streets. See, and I was a hustler. So Robert Harris had the Comedy Act Theater. I had seven clubs. That was banging. That was packed throughout the week. Seven comic club. That's unheard of. Seven. Then I'm, I meet D.L. Hughley. And D.L. is this inspiring young guy who never took a mic before, never understood stand up. And I took D.L. under my wing. He was my man. Every comic in the world will tell you. I took him and 
taught him how to write a joke, taught him how to smile on stage. I gave him all the, the little secrets. And DL is tell you to this, to this day. And I gave him the ultimate gift about how to work all the time as a comedian. And he's very rich. But DL is a multimillionaire. Yeah. But he continues to work because the game that I taught him, he'll tell that to anybody. But Robert Harris, and I, I always show Robert Harris man love on all my shows. I always say I get how I got started. But since you brought this up, I had to, uh, you know, we're here. We, we keep it 100 here. Yep, we keep it 100. He was a hater towards me. Okay. Because the women loved me. I had all the street niggas love me. And they can talk about they loved me from uh, a man named Shannon who started giving DL clothes because of me. Um, all, all my street guys, they love me. And we'll pack the clubs. Like, we had, we had, like, this is when the streets ran the world. Mm. We talk about the 80s, early 90s, when we had the money, yeah. we had the cars, we had everything. Crack arrows in full Crack swing. Crack arrows in full. Everyone had too much money. Exactly. Yeah. We could and I was the guy. Yeah. So when people came to my club, at, see, Michael Williams and Comedy Act Theater paid you $20 a show. Back in my day, we paid you four, five hundred a show, like it was nothing. My friend to this day, Shannon, gave Paul Mooney six hundred dollars. He said Paul Mooney told him he couldn't afford them. He gave him three hundred right there in front and tore up three hundred in front of him and said, "Yo, I'll give you the other three hundred when you come to the show." That's how my crew moved. Okay. So Robin is just part of the game. So I actually called him. As a man, you know, Robin, we need to, we're gonna be working together forever. Like this hate you had told me because there was no reason for him to hate me. So all I could say was it was just jealousy. And so Joe Torrey, who loves me now, we see the, was on riding Robin Harris's dick. The Ricky Harris's was riding Robin. So they was all hating towards me. So they all hating towards DL. Mm. So I gave DL all my clubs. Every last one, because I started going on tour with NWA. I started doing my thing. And like my rise was taking off. So DL was hosting. DL was coming from a, a beautiful one little bedroom apartment with enough furniture for a mansion. I always tell people, I already knew he was going to be successful because he had too much shit in his apartment <laughs> <laughs> that he needed a bigger place. And that's what happened. So um, to this day, I never, 39 years, you're the first person that has ever asked me that question because and i salute i salute you for that because no one 39 years now yep has never asked me about the robin harris situation so when you guys got on the phone did you work it out i tried to work it out that's how i'm built hmm. and um he wound up dying oh and we never got to that point. But if I can go by instinct and energy, it would have never worked out. It's the kind of personality that he had. He's just hard headed. He was just hard headed. He he would have tried to ruin me, hmm. to be honest with you. I think DL was saying how when they would work the same club, Robin would put him on like five minutes before people before the club was shut down. Yeah, you know or, what I'm saying? Like, and like Robin used to, and Robin used to, when I perform, he'll introduce me and walk off the stage so he wouldn't have to shake my hand. Oh. But any comic, the Joe Tories, anybody that ever see comedy now is is saturated. If you came up between 1985 and 2002 in stand up comedy, every comic that was in that circle would tell you how phenomenal T.K. Kirkland was. Like, there we go. Th there's no maybes, there's no ifs, ands about it. It's a known fact. Yeah, but DL's my man, and I'm, I protect DL, DL protects me, and my whole crew, from Sandra Bullock to Godfrey to um, Mike Epps, who lives at her, like, these is a, I have the receipts. These guys are multi-millionaires because of T.K. Kirkland. I, I'm glad that's under my, um, my tulich. Did you hear about what happened to Designer?
<laughs> I just want to say designer sat right where you were sitting last year. <laughs> 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 nice young man. I nice got, young I man. I got nothing negative yes. to say about this dude. He he went through his trials and tribulations, but he had, he's got big songs under his belt. He was signed to Kanye. He saw a career, you know, and so forth. He was masturbating on a plane. Man, I wish I was there because I could have punched that motherfucker in his face. <laughs> There's just some people you just got to punch in their fucking face, man. Like, when I read that, I, I, let me ask you a question. When you read some of these things over the last 10, 11 years, don't you think something's wrong? Yeah, I mean, this is clearly something a sane person would not do. But not just him, as a society. Yeah, masturbating on a plane. Yeah, people are doing some of the most weirdest shit I've ever seen. And to masturbate on the plane, like, no disrespect, I can see you getting some head. Yeah, he wasn't getting head. He wasn't getting head. No. But to pull your shit down, and they said that the flight attendants told him to stop more than one time. So what? Give me a minute. <laughs> Well, let me tell you, Boosie was here, and he went through this whole tirade. I guess this is a thing in prison, right? I guess it's called the 21, because this is like the, the, the name of the charge. Yes. But basically, he was saying how he knows a lot of dudes in prison. He saw a lot of dudes in prison that basically, if there'd be like a female guard up on the tower, they'd just sit there and just jack off to, to the guard. And he went one step further. He described this, this process where, yeah, I can't believe this. I'm actually saying this. So he described this process in prison where dudes will take a piece of string and tie one end to their penis and run it down their pant leg and put the other end like on their big toe and they would kind of like tap their foot. <laughs> They'd be able to like masturbate with no hands. Like if they see like a lady, like a female right, guard, right. and they would just start tapping their foot and be like masturbating. In public, that's what he thinks. He's like, yeah. Next time, Boosie. Like, next time you talk to him, ask if he was looking at the <laughs> the flight attendant while he was doing it. Because I guess this is a some sort of weird sexual thing. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, don't know. I, mean, I just think moral respect and yeah. He's saying he's checking himself into rehab. Uh, you know, which is so he's a, just a horny dude. I don't know what it is. If he's gonna check himself in the rehab, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know. Like like I said, I interviewed him once. He seemed cool as hell. Like, I like some of his music. I, I I just don't see why someone of his he's he's a known person. Like when you get arrested, you're not getting arrested by your government name. Yes, his designers caught masturbating on a yes, plane. Yes, yes. Like, like you know, what I'm saying like you know this is going to be globally embarrassing. Here's the I want everybody to think of this if you can remember this. Remember this rather. When you get in trouble, think about your loved ones. Think about your mother. Think about your high school coach. Think about your basketball coach. Think about your track coach. Think about your daughters. Think about your friends who haven't seen you in years, who they look up to you. Think about people who really care about you. Do not let them down. Now, his situation, that was self-destruct. He's self-destruct. He did yeah. it to himself. Yeah. No one, no one made him do that. No one made him do it. That's all him. Yeah, that's all he him. Claimed, like, he claimed, he said he had taken some medication or something. But uh, no, I don't know if any medication makes you jack off on a plane. Not at all. That'd be an interesting type of prescription. Yeah, bro. that'd be an interesting type of prescription. This has been clinically proven to make you yes. jack off on a plane. It's so sad, Vlad. Damn, man. I just want, I, I want the brothers to do so well. <laughs> like, I, I can only preach so much. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like what the fuck, man? Well, uh, speaking of Boosie, I had Boosie on my show a few months ago. Yes. And we brought up the whole, you know, because T.I. had basically admitted yes. on his podcast yes. and he told on his dead cousin in our interview, which ended up going super viral. Mm -hmm. Boosie said that if that's true, then he's a rat and yes. our joint project is over. T.I. responded and there, there was a little bit of a back and forth, but they actually got on the phone. And in my interview, he said that they talked and essentially- what T.I. was saying in, in the following interviews was he was saying that wasn't true, that he was just embellishing a story. Yes. 
He said, oh, this was like a what if situation, although he never cleared it up yes. for weeks and weeks after he had been out there. Okay. So none of us knew that this was embellishment. This sounded like an actual fact, yes. him saying it out of his own mouth. So Babusi said they got on the phone and they had a long conversation and he actually apologized to T.I. Awesome. I like that. Because I, mean, I just was, was I'm just with Boosie on the plane the other day. Oh, okay. And what's funny, um, Boosie was coming to Vegas. Mm, yeah, because he's got, was, uh, he's got yeah. event space out there. And I was coming to Vegas, but Boosie was in first class. I couldn't get first class, it was sold out. But I made $1,000 off the flight because it was one of them days where they was looking for volunteers mm -hmm. to get off the plane. Yeah. So I took and went on the next flight. I didn't get home until the next fucking morning, like one o'clock, mm -hmm. but it was $1,000 I'm going to use that to go on a nice little trip with my kids, right? But yeah, me and Boosie was on the same flight going going to Vegas and um, love that dude. Energy is always awesome. Always. And it's always us three connection. Yeah. Because what's funny when I do interviews or the MCs bring me on show, you know what they say? Um, Boosie and TK neck and neck on Vlad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Boot, Vlad love Boosie and TK. Yeah. And Tony Ayo's up there too. Yeah, the, Tony's yeah. coming up. Tony's, Tony's coming up now. Yeah. Uh, Tony, 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 that's Tony's my man. Up as well. But yeah. who was first? Was I first? Was we? Was I before Tony? Yeah, 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 Tony. yeah, absolutely. I was with Tony, and I was before for Boosie. I'm not sure. Me and Boosie go back 20 years. Yeah, but not on the show. On the show, I'm not sure. Because I think he was, was away. It was around the same time. Around the same time. Around the same but time. But as the comedian, I was one of the first. Absolutely. Okay, bingo. That's all I need. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Long yeah, time man. First. Listen, and look, they 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 talked about it. Um, you know, T.I. said this publicly, and I guess he reiterated in the conversation with Boosie where he T.I. somehow blames me for it. You know, so you, that you I might as well just live with I this have, shit for the rest of your life. Of, I have a divisive platform, and I'm the reason why they, they're into this beef. And I'm like, this is this is silly because. One thing, like if you know Boosie on any level, you know damn well you can't manipulate Boosie to say anything. Yes, Boosie yes. knows exactly what he's going to say before you ask the question. Yes. He had been sitting on this topic for, for a month. Yes. And I just happened to be the person who asked. Yes. And he had a very distinct, clear answer. He had already made his decision and so forth. But T.I., I mean, listen, I just get blamed for everything, and that's just fine. It is what it, it is. is. What it is. But Black. if you look at T.I., if you look at his whole history, he's always in some shit. Always. He's always in yes, some he shit. Is. Yes, so he how is. are you going to point the finger at someone else when you're always in some shit? Yes, yes, yes. Constantly. Yes, yes. Not a year goes by without some sort of drama in T.I.'s life. And, and T.I., you my man, but it's kind of true. You always It's kind of true. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of true. It just is what it is. I'm just being honest. You know? You know? So, not, so not really, Not like, because Vlad is white and I'm sucking his dick. I'm just being honest. It so, just is I'm what just it is. I just tell people. And I told like, listen, T.I. is welcome to come to my show. We could talk it out. Yeah, I would love for T.I. to come yeah, on we, here. We, you know, but Boosie's like, T.I. ain't coming to your show. And I'm like, okay, that's yeah, fine. You never know. Yeah, who, who Close cares? Mouth it is what it is. Yeah, I, it is I don't care is. if he does or not. Right. He knows that he has, if he ever wants to say something to me, he can say it to me right in front of me. Right. I'm, I, I, I don't, I don't duck anybody. I love them all. I, I love what yeah. Boosie's and done. Rest in peace to uh, to Clay, who I, I've known for a while. Yes, so Clay his manager man. passed away. Very sad yes. news. Yes. Me and him have always had a good relationship. Right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But with T.I. Clay was managing Boosie? No, 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 T.I. Okay, right, right, yeah, right, and, okay. Uh, and Lil Duval. Yeah, 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 Clay was. Exactly. Uh -huh. so, so like I said, it's it's one of those things, man. Uh, I, I'm not going to change anyone's But opinion. let me make sure I'm clear. I want to show man love always to Bootsy. Yep. And man love always to T.I. When y'all see me, y'all always show me much respect. I always show you much respect. And I just want to make sure we we clear that out, that clear the air. Because one thing... I always try to make sure people don't get me involved in is what I call that new age drama bullshit that's out here <laughs> in this world. Like I, I, I'm a grown, I'm, I'm, mo I'm older than mostly all those guys. I, I don't, I don't bring me nowhere in that shit. So I remember listening to Drink Champs, and uh, you had mentioned that there was a situation where the police tried to get you to testify against Puffy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was it over the the shooting, the shine shooting? It was situation? over the shine. It was. Were you what? in the club when that happened? No, no, no. Here's what I the, was like. Yo, you yeah. really are everywhere. Yeah, like. I'm usually everywhere. <laughs> if I'm not there, then somebody gonna put me there. <laughs> right. I did something wrong back in the in ninety seven, ninety eight, where a young lady had gave me some information on a credit card. It wasn't actually Puffy's credit card. 
Um, we talked about this. You yeah, we talked about you, this. You stole some jewelry. Right. No, never stole well, any jewelry. Well, you use his credit card to buy some no, jewelry. No, never was even a credit card. See, that's to this day, people think it was oh, a credit okay, card. okay, my bad. It was a fax machine that was sent over with numbers on it, his credit card number. We didn't actually have his credit card. Okay. Yeah, that's to, to make sure we clear. you technically used his credit technically card clear. number to- But it never got you. See, here's the, here's the tricky shit, right? Okay. The jewelry store that was involved- Never ran Puppy's credit card. They was in it for the publicity. Oh, they they used it as a moment to shine. Okay. Because they was opportunist as well. And their opportunist was call the police. And when you see, if you could ever get the footage on it, right? The reporters, everything was in the jewelry store interviewing the jeweler. Showing the jewelry, etc. You gotta remember, um, jeweler, Jacob the jeweler was the man back then. But this store was competition mm. to okay. Jacob the got jeweler. It. All right, so that's okay, how that I went. Got it. Yeah. Right now, when I got indicted, that's the word. Yep, I got indicted. I got indicted. I was supposed to turn myself in on a certain day. I ain't turned myself in the same day. <laughs> you know, I kept going around the country doing my shows and performing scared that the motherfuckers was gonna come through the door and arrest me. Long story short, I get my attorneys, we all go. And um, and when I go to the, we go to the courthouse and the, 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 the judge is so mad at me, she reprimands me, a word I had never heard before to that day. So I wanna go on the Rikers. Okay. I'm in Rikers. While I'm at Rikers, a situation happens with a young man named Puffy Combs and um, Jennifer Lopez yeah. and Sean. Yeah. They go to a club and apparently the shooting happens, et cetera. Yeah. So next thing I know, the detectives is bringing me from Rikers Island back down to the jail called um, one, one Matt and Sentinel, whatever the street is. Central Booking. Central Booking. Yeah. The CO's like, what the fuck is going on? Because it's all this commotion. They want me to work with them to testify against Puffy Cone. Okay, but you weren't there. I would watch where you're going. They didn't care. Huh. They was going to set Puffy up. They want to put you in a place you weren't they, and say, I saw Puffy shoot exactly. a gun. Exactly. That's exactly what they was doing. That's crazy. That's fucking insane. Wow. So they took me out every day. But you know me, I'm smart. <laughs> so when we was going, I was getting blimpies and shit to eat every day. Like, cause you know, jail food's fucked up. Oh, I know. <laughs> so they had me in the in the club and they was pointing to where Puffy was. That, you know, they was insinuating where I was supposed to be standing. So Puffy, he was here with the gun and, and you was here, but they, you were, and I was feeling the answer. I was here. So right when they got ready to indict Puff, my attorneys and came to me and said, TK, uh, are you going to help um, the prosecution? And basically I said, nah, I'm good. Left it alone. Okay. And that, the rest is history. So Puffy had to deal with um, Johnny Cochran, who was the attorney. Mm -hmm. um, and I got five years probation. But I had, n I never, I used that as an opportunity to get something to eat and to do my thing. But far as with the Puff thing, and even on that show, and now I'm always gonna say it on every show I do, um, what I did when I was a youngster, I truly, um, Mr. Uh, Puffy Combs, apologized for um, taking something that you worked hard for. Because what I've understood growing up as a man, even though I've always had money, I guess I was, just a child not thinking. People work hard for their shit and to take something from someone is just a real horrible thing. Like, I mean, look at me, I'm 60 something years old wearing over a $500,000 watch. I got a $200,000 car outside that oh, you yeah. saw that's beautiful. Oh, oh yeah, no, I, I love, you know, cause usually I have the hot car in the parking lot. Yes. You know, you came in with the, I'm not gonna say what kind it is, yes, but yes, it, was, it was more expensive than mine. Same, same <laughs> thing with Dion Cole, he rolled up in something Big, yes, you know, and I, I love that. Like mm -hmm. to see my guests come in and see them, you know, especially like the, the my repeat guests, like you and Dion. Yes. Every time I see them, they level yes. up, they level right, up, right. they level up. I'm like, yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah, so just living and and we, I worked hard. Yeah, I worked motherfucking hard. This this is a lot of 
traveling, a lot of traveling, and to try to be a good dad, to try to be um, responsible and try to do the right thing. Sometimes you get pitfalls. You get people to try to bring you down, but you, you know, you just got to be a good person. And if you're a good person, it'll all work out for you. Lars the Pippen. Listen to me, that's a bad bitch, but <laughs> the mo again, morals. So you can give me an example. It's like me and your friends. I meet your wife later in life. Mm -hmm. And she says, oh, I used to be married to Vlad. Bitch, I, don't I ain't fucking with you. So I move. Mm -hmm. Ain't that much pussy in the world to make me as a man want to fuck with you and destroy my, even though I, have, I may have not seen you in years, mm -hmm. it ain't worth it. There's rules to life. Yes. And what I feel, Michael Jordan should have checked his son. Well, look, not only is Larsa dating Marcus Jordan, but her son, who she has with Scottie Pippen, is now playing on the same team as Malik Beasley, who she was messing with also. Wow. You see what I'm saying? It's too While messy. he was married... And, you know, then she does the interview saying that for, for 23 years, she had sex four times a day with right. Scottie Pippen. Like, why, why put that out? Why, why put, why put out there? the sex life yes. of the father of your multiple children? That's what I mean by morals, right? You know, like, dude, where's these people? She, she said if her and Marcus got married, she would change her last name to Jordan. I mean, I... I it could even be Pippin Jordan. Let me explain I mean, something. It could be like, like, a, like a belt. Like, let me explain something. I got something. all the belts. So yeah. I got a let Pippin me belt, people. a Jordan belt. And then you know, think about Pippin and Jordan aren't even getting along right now. Like, Ladies and gentlemen, I need you to listen to me. Come on. It, it's so much dick out there in the world that you don't have to do that to yourself. So much pussy. You don't have to keep it in the same circle. When, when I see these celebrities dating, dating the same fucking people. I'm like, you ain't got enough game to go pull somebody that ain't even in that arena? I feel you. Like, you got you got to... Because it's not like they got more money. Half these females and actresses are not balling the way people think they're rich. Well, they're, she's, she's not even an actress. She's, she's not even an she's actress. She's just someone's ex-wife. Don't get me wrong, I would fuck her. But not if I... If my would? homie. No, not now. But I'm saying, <laughs> if, I, if I didn't know who she was... Okay. I will fuck her. I'm being honest. I think the okay. young lady is extremely beautiful. But what do I always say? What's the character of the person? What I mean by that is, once I start talking to you, once I start finding out what you're about, how you move, she's messy. And these guys don't even look at it that way. They think it's, um, they clout chasing, as they say. Now, there's no way I would rock with a woman like that. I wouldn't even want to take a picture with her. Uh, Bitch, get the you. fuck away from me. Listen, uh, when I brought up uh, her name to D.L. Hughley, he said that she is messy, disrespectful, and craven. Yes. It's just, she's messy, I had to look up that last word. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yo, like I said, listen, I understand you, you have kids and you're older and you still have a lot of life left to live and you want to enjoy yourself. But don't embarrass the but father yeah, but, of yeah, but, children. But you could really, you don't, have to keep dipping in the basketball pool. Yes. Really? You really don't. Right. Go date a football player. But not even go, that. Go date a baseball yeah. player. Go date a lawyer. Go go date a yes. whoever. Like, you know what I'm saying? Do you have to keep being Stabbing. in these incestuous, yes. incestuous yes. situations where everyone's tied into everyone else and That's connected and, and every yo, like really like and, and salute your all, son and the dude you were fucking are on the same team. Yes. And imagine salute, some of these locker room jokes that are going to come oh, up. Oh, man. Like, oh, word. Like, you'd be like. And salute to Scotty Pippen. <laughs> was that the dick that was fucking your mom? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, yo, it, it can really get ugly. And salute to Scotty Pippen. You know what kind of pain as a man? Oh, he's, he's, and he's kept it quiet. He's kept it quiet. He's been a true solid person right. but she Vlad. was also fucking with Future and Future yeah. little it did songs song. about yeah. her with something about like... some flippers and yeah, sandals some shit or... some shit oh man oh, get it together know. ladies get it together. get it together you know what Nelly and Ashanti are allegedly back together I thought I saw that yeah Bow Wow uh, told Nelly to sit your old ass down and marry her yeah 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 I, I, um, 
I hope he does right by her this time. That's all. People do grow, and I hope that he does right by her. I hope he doesn't string her along because she is a nice woman. And I guarantee she really wasn't fucking with nobody that much to get let her back in. The, I bet she was just probably really waiting for that nigga to come back. Yeah, it seems like she hasn't really been in any real relationship. No, haven't you haven't seen, seen her, her with really nobody? up with anyone? Nope. Yeah. And that's how you keep it classy. Mm. See, Nelly can truly walk in a room with her and know 15 men <laughs> over the years that he wasn't with her <laughs> yeah. fucked her. Because she's a beautiful woman. She's a beautiful woman. I would like to have a conversation with her because, like I said, it's not just about beauty to me. I mean, it is, but I want to know what you're talking about. It, it comes down to what's coming out that mouth. <laughs> what's that mouth to? Yeah, you know, and I mean intelligence. What do you think about the whole Marcus Houston situation with his uh, wife? Hmm. Say, He's 20 years older than 19 that. year age. 19, difference. right? Well, um, he met her when she was 17, but they didn't start to date until she was legal. It's a gift and a curse to that. The the gift is he, 41 and 22. Yeah, the, think, here's the gift married. and the curse. <laughs> now I've interviewed Marcus before. Cool dude. Got nothing bad to say. Nice about guy. Him. Nice guy. But here's the curse. You ready? Here's the curse. Let's hear it. The curse. What history has shown us that men who marry that they women at the young age, usually when you get 60, 70 years old, the woman leaves the guy. Depends. Depends on the stature of the man. Yeah. Right? You know, like Tony Bennett has a younger wife that's yeah. standing by him and mm -hmm. he's going through dementia and stuff yes. like that. Um you know, Jay-Z and Beyonce have an age difference, but it's like maybe 13 years. Yes, yes. It's not that bad. Once you get into 20-year age difference, mm. you know, I mean, listen, I'm not one to judge. I, I've dated younger women yeah. throughout my life. Not a 19, mm -hmm, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you know that, that that's, you know. See, because everything, but see, here's the thing with me, and I'm a lot older than you too. Mm -hmm. Everything is nice until the shit hits the fan. Right. He said that women his age often have baggage and that single moms are red flags. And he hasn't tied to that. But and that that pissed a lot of people off, the, obviously. The, the, here come the curse. But, but you have, but you also have baggage also as a 41 year old. Here's the curse. You know? When you're 70 and you're shitting on yourself and you got dementia and she's still this young girl. Yeah. Living life. Because you're going to, she, if you'll make it that long, she sees the world differently now. Will she stand by you? And last time I checked, and I'm just going to buy statistics. Yeah. They don't look so good. No, you're right. I think, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Hugh Hefner tried to marry some little young chick near yeah. the end of his life, and she ran away like the day of the wedding. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, not listen, the same. It's not. No, you're right. I mean, see, everybody's under the illusion you want a family. Be, I want a family to be around me. You came into this world by yourself. You leaving by yourself. I tell people, only people going with you if you do it is a suicide. You gonna kill a motherfucker and shoot yourself. We all die this motherfucker together. <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> you leaving this motherfucker by huh. yourself. Rest in peace, uh, Harry Belafonte. One is smooth. I didn't know he was that smooth until I started seeing some of the old footage. Oh, yeah. I, I, I met said, him. Uh, I actually met him at Jamie Foxx's house. Wow. They, he, Jamie was having this little benefit for Trayvon Martin's uh, parents. Okay. And he was there. Yes. And uh, yeah, what, what I didn't know, I remember I was talking to the woman that was with him. She she brought up, you know, because we were talking and, and I told her uh, I, I was Jewish. And she goes, oh, you know that I guess Harry Belafonte, one of his wives, was Jewish, mm -hmm. and like these like really popular Jewish songs, Hava Nagila. Yes, he actually was the one that popularized that. Wow! So you know what I'm saying? Like he dug in, like he popularized that, or you know, Daylight Come and We Want to Go Home. These were all old songs yes. that he dug up and made them popular again, and, and really created yeah, a lot of a culture. He was a handsome guy, handsome guy, yeah, but who, who gave up a lot of Hollywood opportunities because of his stance on social equality and everything else wow. like that. Yeah, he didn't want to do the the shuck and jive type 
yeah. bullshit and stood stood by his morals and that limited his career somewhat. Okay. But it gave him the integrity that gave him the respect all the way up to his final day. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Respect is everything. Jerry Springer passed away. Man. Uh, like Jerry, I didn't know he had cancer. Yeah, he kept it quiet. Yeah, he kept it real quiet. He kept it quiet, man. Um, you know, listen, some people loved what he did. Some people hated it. I never looked at him doing nothing bad. He didn't cause fights. Like, I'm, I'm confused yeah. when I hear that. Like, what do you mean? What, ha- what did, what did I mean, he do? I guess he brought up a lot of foolishness on television. But, you know, I guess the one thing, I remember a friend of mine pointing this out to me. He said, like, when you see all these fights on Jerry Springer, notice how they're not really fighting. Yes. No one ever gets punched in the face. That's so true. No one ever gets a tooth knocked out. No yes. one has a bloody nose. And, and some of his stuff, no, no disrespect, was stage. You know, I think all of it was stage. Yeah. I think stage. there was a, some bad feeling, but I think it's understood. Like, okay, y'all can fight, but y'all can't actually. Right, right. Yeah, so it was stage. I had a couple of people. Man, listen, if, if, if it was real life and, and you're confronting the dude that's fucking your wife yes. for the first time. Oh, you're going and, to and, war. And you're going to, you're going to. Yeah. You might have some brass knuckles yeah, you go in, in your war. pocket. Like, Absolutely. You know what I mean? You like, yeah, man. It's it's a lot that could happen. But, you mm-hmm. know, listen, he brought a, a certain thing to TV that hasn't been duplicated. Yes. It changed the game of TV. Changed the game yes, of TV. Yes, it sure did. Changed the game. Uh, Bob Lee, the founder of Cash App, yes. was stabbed to death. And what was just released, I think, today was that prior to him getting stabbed, him and the married sister of yes. the guy who killed him went to go see a convicted drug dealer. And he had cocaine and ketamine in the system at the time that he died. So they were doing some partying drug shit leading up to his death. Because it, it was like, yo, three o'clock, this dude was like a billionaire. I was like, what the fuck are you doing What's out? What's he doing out there? That's what I said. Yeah. Is so the like guy some- that shot, the Samuel did what? Well, he was the sis, the brother of the woman that he was basically cheating with. He was married as well, and she was married. So they were. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, all right. So here okay. we go. Here Slow we go. it down for me. Okay. Bob Lee, Bob, okay. Bob Lee, who's married, who's married. the founder of Cash App, yep. was messing around with this other woman, this okay. Middle Eastern woman who was also married. Okay. They were out partying, doing drugs, is what okay. it appears like. The woman's brother confronted him, I guess, in a car. And during the confrontation, what the fuck is he? The guy stabbed about? him. He stabbed him to death. Why? Because his sister? I don't know. We don't know yet. We don't, we're not quite sure. But the guy's been arrested. Yeah, no, I know he got arrested, but I know it was about another man. Let me tell you, another bitch. For your sister? Oh, you said, yo, man. This, this, this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not stabbing nobody. Man. <laughs> y'all gonna have to work it out. Both of y'all are gonna But why is he st- oh, is he is he upset that he, um but his sister was fucking Mr. Lee? Apparently, allegedly. But why are you upset on fucking your sister? I don't know. This some scarface shit you is Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> some Tony Montana shit. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, man, and this guy was a, a cash out. Cash out. Everyone knows about this shit. Because when I saw the video of him standing at the door and he fell. Yeah. First thing I said was, what the fuck are you doing out? I thought it was a robbery or something. Yeah. I said, it's either a robbery or it was someone close to him in the tech world that wanted him out for something else to happen. Because believe it or not, um, the feds had dropped their version of Cash App the very next day. And I said, what a coincidence. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. It's uh, it's an ugly situation. The dude that stabbed him, I remember I found, before they announced, put up his picture, I actually found him on LinkedIn. And on his LinkedIn page, he said he went to UC Berkeley. And I'm like, oh, that's where I went to school. Like, that's not a good look. But then UC Berkeley <laughs> announced that he never even went there. The whole thing was a scam. He had put up a fake university thing. He never even took classes there. So the dude seemed like he was somewhat of a scammer himself and... I don't know. Maybe he was saying, "Yo, give me a million dollars and I'll keep this quiet." So I don't know. I don't know. The I'm guy who this died shit. was saying that he was going to UC Berkeley. No, the, no, the guy who killed him. Okay, said he was going to Berkeley. He said he went to Berkeley, but it's not even true. Wow. So yeah, man. I don't know. This shit's confusing, man. This That's why I stay in my own little <laughs> motherfucking world. I, I don't want no problems, man. Last question. 
and you have answered this before yes. uh, on other shows, but I never actually knew it. So I, I want to get this little piece on yes. Vlad TV. Your famous catchphrase, who raised you? Yes. Tell me the story behind this. Who raised you is based on, you know, I, I love dating women. Mm -hmm. I, I think women are beautiful. Um, um, and I remember going out with this gorgeous girl. Oh, my God. But her mindset was fucked up. She would have me looking, she would look at other women's asses. And I said, I don't do that. Like, I'm not gonna sit here with you and watch another woman's ass. That's not what I do. I took on a trip with me and she broke a rule of mine. The rule was, we're disciplined. We don't party. We got to do the shows, go to sleep, catch a flight. These girls that she met there was like, oh, they want to hang out. You should come hang out. You, you work too hard. And I let my guard down when I hung with her. I'm giving you the version they never heard, Vlad. Let's so you my man. Yep. And we fucked. We sleep. And I missed my fucking flight. Mm -hmm. And you know when you miss a flight, it costs you more money. Mm -hmm. Especially if you book it way in advance. So it cost me more money. I was pissed. I kept it. So I used to, I was saying to her, I said, I need to meet your parents. She said, what do you mean? She said, I said, I need to know who the fuck you sent you into the world unprepared. Cause it's other things leading up to that. I got so tired of her that we flew to Miami. She thought she was going to hang with me, but I had a ticket for her to go back. So when we land, I said, come here. I was like, I was like, everything. I was like girl, mwah. I said, here's your ticket. I said, where I? I said, you got it. You're going back home. I got to go get my money. I never saw her again. Uh -huh. So that's the true story on who raised you. Who raised you? Saved it for the one and only, mm. my man, Vlad. That's the thorough story to the T on how who raised you came about. And that's why I use it to this day because um, we are all raised, but everyone we meet, Mm -hmm. We pick up something from everybody, the way you cologne, a haircut, a pair of shoes, the way you talk. It's, everybody raises us. And if people pay attention to it, you will see how you took something from every person you met to make you who you are today. Yeah, I mean, we've all had fucked up women in our lives. Yes. I remember I had this one fucked up female I had dealt with who stole from me. Mm -hmm. And I remember years later, we kind of became cool again. Yes. And I remember I brought up that situation mm -hmm. and she just said, you know, I was with this girl that was in my ear telling me to do it. And this, this girl and the, the, the group of females was around yes. was telling me to do it. And I, I'm being given that type of advice. So I'm carrying it out, not realizing later on I'm fucking up a good thing. Yes. You know yes. what I mean? We, like I said, people grow, yeah, right? People grow. People grow. And, and I, I accepted that apology. Yes. You know, I'm sorry. And I yes. said, okay, I got it. You're right. People get affected by everyone around them. It's not even their parents mm -hmm. sometimes. Yep. It's their peers. Oh, definitely the peers. Yeah, it's definitely parents the peers. have no fucking rights. Are you kidding yeah, me? Exactly. Whoever your kids hanging with. Oh yeah. Is influencing your children. Way more. Way, Way more. more. Yeah. But here's what I want to add to you. If I hope I didn't cut you off too no, soon. Go ahead. To the women, I want you to listen to me very carefully. If you meet a man that has never checked you about the way you talk, if you meet a man that's never checked you about how you wear your hair, what you wear out in public how you carry yourself as a woman mm -hmm. when you're out, that man doesn't have the wisdom to lead you. Yes. See, some men lead with money, but ladies, you have to be taught discipline, yes. self-respect. Yes. Um, to always better yourself as life continues to grow. Oh yeah, I, I had, I remember I had it's this, so important. this nightmare girlfriend at one point that would want to go outside with her jeans so low that her ass crack would be showing. Oh, I've been through that. And I'm like, yo, like, can you not do that? Why? Are you ashamed of me? And I'm like, no, you're going to attract a certain amount of attention. Thank you, sir. Which will be negative. Yes. And then I will be caught in that situation. Yes, right. And now I, I'm going to have to fight some dude because of the way you're dressed because yes. you're not 
dressing in a respectful manner with a man that she's like, so like yo, true. like, and she wouldn't get it. She wouldn't get it. And her dumb ass, I haven't seen her since. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like this has happened over and over again. But there's also been other women that I've said, listen, this outfit's not appropriate with me. Yes. And we they respect it. Thank they you. They respect it. Yep. They and sure if, will. If you want to wear that, we're not going out. Yes. And Take I have two leave. great stories I want to share with the world. Let's hear it. I met a beautiful woman named Diane in New York years ago. And I told Diane, we was on the phone talking. I said, Diane, you got to stop cursing. Puerto Rican girl, binding the motherfucker, Vlad. Ah, oh, TK, fuck that. This is who I am. Blah, blah, blah. I cut her off. I cut her off. Six mm -hmm. months later, she calls me. TK, I saw what you was talking about. I saw this beautiful girl walk in the nail salon, use a profanity. What I'm trying to tell women is that when you're beautiful and you use profanity, you devalue your beauty. Go down a few notches. Listen to what I'm, and mm -hmm. if you don't, if you get mad at what I just said, this is over your head. This is grown folks talking. Obviously the motherfuckers y'all fucked with in your life didn't put you up on game on how to move through this life. When you're a woman, always sound like a lady. You, I'm not saying don't ever curse. What I'm saying is curse when you're mad so a motherfucker know you're mad. Do you understand? Yeah. But to beautiful, you beautiful ladies curse. You're using words that men talk. You, you're texting men saying top of the morning. I find that offensive <laughs> coming from a fucking woman. <laughs> top of, top the, of morning. the morning from a woman? You're saying shit like man in a text, M-A-N-N. -N. What's up, man? When we gonna, like, are you fucking kidding me? Calling you bro. Yeah, calling me bro. <laughs> Listen, ladies. If no man has never took the time to put you up on game to make you a better woman, see, because a man will know if you've been with a good man prior to him, because he see the way you move. Like, oh, man. But when you see a bitch crazy, you see all out of line, <laughs> you got to leave him alone because, you no, know, yeah, some of you ladies got fat ass, you're gorgeous, but they only fucked you. They ain't teach you nothing. Mm. And a man, when he meets a woman, whether he stays with her or not, he wants to drop knowledge Facts. into her. You're supposed to leave her better than how you found her. Exactly. That's, and I could say that all my relationships, short or long, I don't think anyone could say that I put them in a worse position. Thank you. After I left yes. or they left. And that's what you, that's a man. That's a man. That's a man. Everyone, that's why I don't have any angry exes good not a single one i don't have anyone that's out on the internet trying to blast me trying to talk shit about me make up lies about me call me gay whatever like right. it just it just doesn't happen because every woman ultimately knows that i did the best that i could yes sir with them yes sir. and try to always push them in a better direction yes, now sir. sometimes they didn't want to be pushed they want to do bad yes they insist on doing that. And then you leave that. them there. And you leave them there. You leave them you there. You leave them there. You say, I've done all and I you could. you got to be a man to leave them there. Yes. You can't, you can't save everybody. You can't save everyone. And you, you gentlemen, you got to know. And ladies, y'all too. You can't save people from themselves. You can't. Yes. And understand the universe. Oh, this is perfect. I want to share this with you. And understand the universe, ladies and gentlemen. You know how when a, a woman doesn't want to rock with you, but the guy pursues her? Oh, you fuck! You gonna you gonna give him? We keep pursuing. At my age, from what I see, the universe is protecting you, mm. but you don't see it, mm. and you keep chasing this person that the universe don't want you with. Then you wind up having a baby. You start having some of the most chaotic things in your life happen: pain, confusion. Yes, because you don't understand frequency. Yes. See, when you get older, listening to people, that's why I'm on this I've planet. I've been there. I, I know. I, I'm thinking of multiple situations. Yes, like frequency. Yes. You got to know how to read it like reading music. Mm -hmm. And when you see that the woman is not interested, don't be mad. It's that the universe sees something you don't see. Yes. And they're protecting you. I, I, hey, what can that's I tell you? That's how it is. TK Kirkland. Blast. Always a pleasure. Until next time. All your bills, we hundred dollar bills, Vlad. Yes, <laughs> that's what it is. Man.